It's only eight o'clock. Do you know I'm just about sick of you? You start late, you finish early, and what you do in the middle wouldn't put a blister on a baby's finger. I do me share. I work hard. You don't know what work is, you. Look at me. Oh, I must be lacking. Off to the Rovers, toiling and moiling for Annie Walker, while she follows me around, running her fingers along the shelves, looking for dust. Then I'm not finished. Oh, no. Then it's off to my Baldwin's and start all over again. Well, I'm sick of doing other folks' cleaning. Jimmy, sick of it. You're looking at me cleaning windows outside. You forget that, don't you? I'm outside in all weathers. You're in here all weathers, you mean, dodging. Makes no difference to you whether it's sunshine, moonshine or pantshine. You do not. Hello, hello. Is that the love birds I ate, Sheriffin? What are you doing back at this time? You've only just gone out. Got the sack, have you? Calm yourself, Hilda. The lads are in Rosamond Street muddling through while I come home and have a cup of tea. Established working practices. Mm. Oh, well, when you go back, just get Idle Jack here out the house with you. I'm off. You know, she thinks the world of you, that woman. She worships the ground that's coming to you. Doesn't know how lucky she is. Patience I have with her. Many a broker walks straight out the flaming house. I'll tell you what, Stan, it's a bit thin out there this morning. There's a nasty wet wind. You need your winter drawers on. Hey, what do you think of that? Old folks out in Chester Zoo. You thinking they're going? No, 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 the advert. Established window cleaning round for sale. Weatherfield area. Apply box 186. You thinking of buying it? Already mine, isn't it? What, you've gone out and bought it? It's my round. I'm selling it. Don't tell Hilda. You mean that's around your round and you got it up for sale? Yeah. And Hilda knows nothing about it? When she finds out it'd be too late, I've sold it. Stanley. Yeah. Look, I might be simple or something, but if and when you sell this round, what are you going to do for money? Oh, you sound like our Hilda. Well, come on, it's a fair question. Look, I'm fed up cleaning windows. I'm fed up going up and down that flaming ladder. I've had enough. Finish. Look, I can understand now you might get fed up. I mean, I might get fed up with even dustbins after 20 or 30 years, but it still brings us back to the same question, doesn't it? What are you going to do for hackers? Well, I mean, the rent you pay, you know, and uh, Hilda brings a fair amount oh, in. Oh, I see. You're going to be a parasite. I am not going to be a parasite. I'm going on Social Security. Oh, Stanley! No, that's what I'm going to do. And think on. Keep your trap shut. Well, I'll be off to work. Are you sure you're fit for work? Yeah. Well, you don't look it. I know for a fact Charlie slept last night. Look, why don't you stay at home today, bro? Look, look, I'm going. It's better to have something to do than hang about here. So don't keep going on, will you? I'm sorry, lover. No, I didn't mean it. And I didn't mean to go on. I know you're worried. It's that man, isn't it? It's him you worried about. I suppose he dies. It's not your fault, Brian. You were just trying to stop him robbing the town. I know, love, but suppose... Look, he shouldn't have been stealing the money in the first place. It's his own fault he got hurt. I keep trying to tell myself that. Well, it's true. You didn't go looking for trouble, did you? He did. You were just doing your job. I know all that. But it still doesn't stop me from feeling rotten, though. And all the time I wake up and I, I get this sick feeling and... I mean, it was me that hit him, love, and, and if he dies... Oh, Brian. I wish I could help. I wish there was something I could do to make you feel better. Oh, you do, love, you do. Look, I'm gonna be late. God, stone of crows. Come on, sleeping beauty. Oh. Wait, come on, you'll stop out. There's a cup of coffee there for you. What's the matter? Oh, it's you. Who do you think it was? Sylvie? <laughs> You're nothing like her, thank God. <laughs> oh, thanks, son. I always knew you could rely on you to look after your old dad. Of course, better. <clears throat> what time is it? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock? What have you woke me up this time for? Because I happen to have my cleaning lady coming this morning. And she may take exception to a bundle of rubbish like you. Ooh, charming. It's a nice way to talk to your father, I must say. You can let me sleep on till the pub's open. What time did you get in last night, eh? Or should I say this morning? Search me. We're fair all right, though. Sylvia and me. <laughs> you have a bit of fun up here, all right, got you, eh? 
We ended up in some club or other. Full of footballers, it was. All big names, you know. You must be spending a fortune on this mystery. Well, oh, why not? He's a bit special, isn't you, eh? Yeah. How long did you say you knew her? I told you. Four weeks. Four weeks? And you're spending all your money on a bird you've only known for a month? Look, son, what's the point in spending your money on some bird you've known all your life? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I knew you'd see it my way. When it comes to women, we're just the same, you and me. Oh, no, we are not. For a start, I'm 25 years younger. Age has got nothing to do with it when you're enjoying yourself, son. You'll find that out. Well, I'm in no hurry, but I'll tell you this. What? When she's spent all your money, don't you come running to me to try and catch a few, Bob. Have I ever? Hundreds of times. Look, let me worry about my money. While I've got it, I'll spend it. When I haven't got it... You look around for a mug who has. <laughs> oh, I don't feel that way. I just pretend I'm gay. I'm only painting the ground with the sunshine. We're shot. Oh, hello, it's Gail's mum, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry, but we're not open for another ten minutes yet. Is she in the big white chief? She'll only tell you what I've told you. We're not open yet. Thank you, Mrs. Ogden. Morning, Mrs. Good morning, Mrs. Walker. I keep telling her we're not open, Mrs. Walker. I'm glad I haven't got that kind of craving. I I'm right out of change, Mrs. Walker, so I was wondering if you could give me some small... I don't know if you usually oblige out. Oh, certainly, dear. Lots of silver. Oh, good. Could you do me ten pounds? Twenty, if you like. Oh, if you can spare it. Better safe than sorrier. Oh, you're uh, working for Alf Roberts, then, are you? Helping out in the shop, like? Yes, just while he's on holiday. Oh, fancy. Not like you, Mrs. Ogden, to be behind with the local news. Oh, no, I'm the last to hear anything, me. Well, I mind my own business, you see. <laughs> Any time, dear. Half and half and help one another out with change. Well, I'm one of his best customers, you know. Oh, you'll find that out. Yeah, one of the old faithfuls, me. <laughs> we uh, more or less have an account, like, you know, settle up the end of the week. Or the fortnight, usually. Well, I expect he'll have told you that. No, no, he never said. Oh. Oh, well, I suppose he was in a rush to get away. Must have slipped his mind. No, no. All he said, whatever you do, Audrey, no tick. Thank you ever so much, I'm Mrs. Walker. Ta da now. Oh, she's hard faced, is that one? Oh. I always think she's rather a nice woman, Mrs. Potter. Of course, it's Miss Potter, really, isn't it, if everybody had their own? I mean, even though she's got a daughter and a grandson. Now, come, come, Mrs. Ogden. We must be charitable. I don't know why. Nobody's ever charitable to me. Well, now, love. Hey, why didn't you let us know you were coming? I could have done you some dinner. That's all right, Mum. I'm not hungry. Well, uh, do you fancy eggs on toast? I'd like some of that for you. No, thanks. I don't fancy anything. What's up? Uh, is it that lad yet? <sighs> yeah. Oh, give over, Brian. I'll tell you one thing for nothing. He's not worrying about you. He can't, can he? He's in hospital with a fractured skull. Well, that's his own fault, isn't it, love? I mean, he, he shouldn't have come round to... Hang that... on, hang on. Has something else happened to what? He's on the danger list, isn't he? I mean, that's enough. That means he could die. Brian, that's got nothing to do with you. Look, you didn't ask him to come robbing that till, did All you? All right, we know that, love. I mean, you can understand him being upset, can't you? We know that lad's a dead ook, but no matter what he's done, I mean, he's on the danger list, he's critically ill. You can understand him being upset. But it's not just that either. There's something else. This bloke came in a garage today. He's a Polarons. He's an accountant or something like that. Well, there's a sort of fellow who knows what he's talking about. Well? Well, he reckons I can get done for it in this guy. Give over, Brian. What, a villain like that? I mean, he's a criminal, isn't he? Look, you caught him in the act. You were trying to stop him. Look, this fellow I'm talking about says that doesn't make any difference. If somebody's robbing your house and you hit them too hard, you can get done for it. Oh, rubbish. I know, love. I'm going, he might be right. I think I've heard something like that. Well, all right, so what if he is right? I Brian didn't hit him too hard, did you, love? Ma'am, he's nearly dying. That's the word he hit him. Oh, hello. Hey, isn't that my Baldwin's dad? Who's that girl with him? It's his girlfriend, isn't it? And not mine, it's the old man. You're kidding. As soon as I'm standing here, he said it's his secretary. Good, wouldn't he? But I mean, he's taking her out and all that, isn't he? She must be 40 years younger than him. It doesn't seem fair, does it? Like, a young woman who can pick and choose seizing an older man. 
Oh, it's the road round, love, when it comes to season. Blokes, what do the baby snatching? You look at Carrie Granson all then. Nobody bats an eyelid when they take a young woman out. That's true, and yet if an older woman goes out with a younger man, well, everybody thinks it's so. The old, old story, love. Women get the muckier. Oh, exactly. I mean, just supposing now that Mrs. Walker were going out with Eddie. Do you mind? Yeah, I mean, just supposing. Well, you can imagine what everybody around here would be saying. Can't you mocking at her? Any woman who goes out with Yates, love, deserves all the mocking that's coming to her. Hey, hang, John. I don't like the way this discussion's changing. You're lovely, really, Eddie. You're almost as nice as the real thing. Pardon? Ah, uh -huh. thanks very much, Mrs. Walker. Take one on us, will you? Oh, thank you. Very I don't think you met Mrs. Walker, have you? No, no. Mrs. Walker, this is Sylvie. Oh, I'm pleased to meet you. How do you do? Sylvie's my secretary, aren't you, darling? Yes. Among other things, you could call her my uh, my girl Friday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Business must be flourishing then. I cannot grumble, can I, Flower? No. Mind you, neither can she. <laughs> Lights out, please, Bat. Hey, Hilda, you talking to me? Well, I'm not showing a break. Hey, there's an item here in your state that should interest you. Established window cleaning round for sale in the Weatherfield area. You want to buy that for your stand? My stand's already got one window round, thanks very much. I know, but if we had two, we could double his earnings, couldn't we? He could earn as much as 40 quid a week. <laughs> well, that shows how much you know about business, doesn't it? My stand pays more than that in tax. Oh, that's in tax, is it? <laughs> there you are. Hospital. You better give him a ring now. Yeah. I think I will. Hey, do you think he should? I mean, he could look as if he's... What? Well, I don't know, do I, really? Oh, uh, hello. Uh, I'm ringing up to inquire about a, uh, a Ronnie Burgess. No, I'm sorry, uh, I don't know what ward he's in. Yeah, yeah, of course, I'll hang on, yeah. Listen, if there is going to be any trouble, you know, it could look bad in ringing up. What do you mean, how can it look bad? Well, you never know, do you? I mean, things get twisted, don't they? Pardon? No, uh... No, I'm, I'm not a relative. Um, I'm a friend of his. Flipping it, Brian! A friend of that... I... Look, will you just give it a rest? Yes, yeah, I'll hang on. <laughs> some fags. I thought you were him coming back, actually. No, it's easy to tell the difference between me and him, if you look close. I mean, he's the one with the varicose veins and the wheezy breathing. Oh, yeah. At least you know what you got to look forward to. They say like father, like son, don't they? Yeah, well, with him, it's more like son, like father. Whatever I do, he chips in. He's like he's trying to show me he's got a bit of life left in him. Oh, he has that. I can vouch for that. Tell me, what are your plans, eh? You and the old man. Do you have to keep calling him that? Couldn't you try Dad for a change? Ah, uh, upsets you, does not The word old? No, it's just a bit obvious, that's all. Actually, we're off to the races this afternoon. Haydock Park. He likes to date the races, your dad. We were at Windsor last week. Well, I'm glad you can still get a bit of fun out of life. While it lasts. You know a bit of fun that lasts forever, do you? Because I've not heard of it. That's true. When you were asking about our plans, you didn't just mean today, did you? You were talking generally, weren't you? Did it upset you, me asking? No. I'll try and answer you. As far as I'm concerned, Mike, I've got no plans, none at all. Today the race is, tomorrow who knows. So if you're asking me where me and Frankie are heading, I just couldn't tell you. Yeah, but what about the old... Uh, what about Frankie? What plans do you think he's got? I'm sorry, you're going to have to ask him. But can I ask you something? Hmm. What do you think about your dad and me? You're against it, aren't you? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Are you sure? I mean, I get the feeling that you don't approve, that you're a bit shocked. He does whatever he chooses, but I'll tell you this. I've known him a far sight longer than you have, and nothing he ever did would shock me, sweetheart. Oh, Elder. Oh, 
Well, I don't know. If it's not Stanley sleeping in his bed off, it's you. You know, I could float a battleship on the amount of ale that passes through this house in a week. Well, what are you looking for? Ben. <clears throat> Behind the wireless. Oh. Oh, yeah. Ah, and while we're on the subject of pens, you've been doing drawings on my muriel, haven't you? Who, me? Yes, you. You've been doodling on it. You're a flipping doodle bug. That's not doodling. It's proper drawing, that. It's artistic. Yeah, well, I'm not having that muriel ruined. I've improved it. See them two little men looking up at the cliffs, raising their eyes to heaven? Well, that is like uh, the human touch to nature's grandeur. Yeah, philosophical statement, that is. Well, any more of it, you get this pen in your ear hole. Ooh, it's no good being philosophical in this house, is it? What are you doing? Writing a letter. Reply to this advert in the paper. Somebody's selling a wind around. Pardon? There's a wind around for sale, and I'm writing off to see how much they want for it. You see, what I thought was, I could buy it for Stan. I wouldn't do that, Hilda. Why not? Well, he's already got a wind around, hasn't he? Well, that's the idea, you pie can. If he has another one, he'd be able to double his productivity, like Mrs Thatcher's always on about. Yeah, but a wind around's going to cost money, isn't it? You haven't got any. Ah, I thought of that. I can we can pay it off so much a week. You see, if Stan's earning double money, we'll be able to afford it. Well, I still think you ought to have a word with Stanley first. No, and don't you say that neither, because I know Stan will be against the idea. Oh, you're not wrong there, Hilda. And he'll just have to get used to it, won't he? I mean, let's face it, Eddie. I'm getting to the time of life now where I don't want to be toiling away all the hours God sends. And if I get this extra round for Stan, I'll be able to sit back and let him get on with it. Hey, I'll be living off the fat of the land. Stanley. <laughs> Uh, any road, you just keep your mouth shut, because I want all this to come as a surprise to him. Oh, it'll do that all right. Very well, dear. Opening time, you may unlock the door. Hi, ex Stanley, you're quick off the mark. I reckon if there was an Olympic medal for the public house dash, you'd win. Stop whittering, get behind that bar and get me a pint. Now, that tells me you've paid a visit to Ireland and kissed the Blarney Stone. Eh? Oh, yes. Where else could you have got this gift of the gab, this silver tongue way that you have with women? Get that pint and less of it. Hiya, hi, Cop. Hello, Mr. Parker. More small change, is it? No, thanks, Mrs. Walker. No, just a lager. My tongue's hanging out. I have shut the shop so them that haven't been are too late. At half past five? That's much earlier than half closes. Well, Alf isn't here, is he? If he wants to come back off his holiday and keep the shop open, he's very welcome. That will serve you. Well, what's she going all frosty for? I mean, it's not her business, is it? I have been open since nine o'clock. I reckon I've done enough. Quite right. I'll pay for that. Did I hear you right, Stanley? You're buying this lady a drink? Yeah. You drink with me, won't you? Thanks very much. I won't say no. <laughs> oh, it's been Frankie Bold and his dolly bird. That's what's done it. The what? Got him buying you a drink. All the dirty old men round here will be fancying their chances. Are you calling old? I'm in the prime, me. Ah, so you admit to the rest of it, dear? She's only teasing. You're as young as you feel, aren't Quite you? so. You know, when I heard you say you'd done enough work, I thought, there's a very sensible woman. Well, you would. My old dad used to say to me when I was a lad, Stan, he'd say, don't worry your head about work. There'll be plenty left when you're dead and gone. Well, you've certainly taken his advice. Mind you, that's why you've got no money. No, I haven't. I've got an important business deal on that could bring a tidy sum in, and no doubt. Hey, the matter? Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. I've been worried all day. Well, look, I called the hospital at dinner time and asked about him. And? Oh, he's out of danger. Oh, Brian. They weren't going to say anything at first, so uh, I had to tell a few lies. They asked me if I was a relative of his. Uh, I told him I was a friend. I thought to myself, blimey, with friends like that only his enemies. <laughs> but anyway, they reckon he's all right. He's off the danger list. So everything's all right? Yeah, I reckon so. Oh, I've been worried. Go I'm on. glad it's all over. Oh, my. Hey, where's Nicky? He's in bed. Is he? Hey, I reckon that's where we should be. I've seen the letter in my tea leaves only the other morning. Never realised I'd be posting it instead of getting it, though. But it definitely indicated a money connection. <laughs> you don't think she can have closed already, do you? 
Oh, I wouldn't put it past her. From what I've seen of her, she'll please herself. She's probably with some fancy man. I'm not one to chat about it, you know, but I've got a good head for business. I've got a deal on the moment. What's that then, Stan? <laughs> oh, it's hush hush. When you've been in the game as long as me, you know when you're on the good thing. Well, if there's any tips you can pass on to me, I mean, I'm never too proud to learn. Do you mind if I say something utterly frank? Depends what it is. <laughs> I'll chance it. You see, to my mind, you don't have the look of a businessman. Now, Audrey, you should never go by appearances alone. Oh. That's right. Never judge a book by its cover. Right. I mean, you read about blokes like him. They die and they're worth hundreds and thousands of pounds. And all their life they've gone around like a bundle of washing, like Stan. That's right. Hey. You can have a drink then, Stan. Uh, a pint, yeah. Bet. Well, pint for Stan, will you? And a gin and tonic for Audrey. And, oh, you better include those two as well. Does that include his <coughs> office staff? So do you reckon she's going to be your future stepmother? Yeah, now, don't talk stupid. <laughs> really frightened you, didn't it? Yeah. Impeccable timing, as usual. Oh. You better tell Bet what you want. No, no, this round's on me. Please give Mike and his friends whatever they'd like. He's celebrating summer, love. Three winners at Haydock Park. Yeah, not me, mind you. Just Sylvie. Yeah. I never had a tickle. Always been your problem, that, it? Fast women, slow horses. Yeah, but I'm a good judge of a filly, eh? Look at Sylvia. Not only lovely, but generous with it. <laughs> Spending all the winnings on me, too. Whose money did she use to bet with? Oh, blimey, son. You do not remind me of your mother sometimes. At seven o'clock, we crossed the Pennines to the Yorkshire Dales to visit Emmerdale Farm. That's followed at half past seven by comedy when Dudley and Muriel Rush try to keep it in the family. Good evening, Mrs. Tilsley. Detective Sergeant Whiteley. Yeah, I remember. Can we come in? Hello. Hello. No, thank you, love. I've got a bit of bad news for you, Mr. Tilsley. Uh, about Ronnie Burgess? Oh, it's okay, because I, I called the hospital today and this is going to be all right. Yeah, so I believe. Not that we're too bothered about his state of health. I've come to take you down to the station. Oh. I've got to charge you, I'm afraid, lad. With the unlawful wounding of Ronald Burgess at Sykes Filling Station on September the 28th. Unlawful wounding? He's that Burgess you should be arresting. Brian was just sticking up for himself. I know how you feel, love. But these things aren't up to me. I just do me job. That's what I'm doing now. Come on, lad. Don't worry, love. And don't upset yourself.
Oh, well, you see, Mrs. Walker, that depends if work is the be-all and end-all of your life, and it comes very low down on the list of my priorities. I reckon I was put on this earth as more of a decoration than a pit pony. I don't know about you, Mrs. Walker. Well, I can only hope that Mr. Roberts subscribes to your attitude to the business when he comes back. If he has a business to come back to, that is. <coughs> You can't go giving cheek to Mrs. Walker like that. She doles out visas round here for it. Oh, come on. Landlady should be seen and not heard. What do you say, Bert? Well, you've got more guts than I have, I'll say that. Watch it, Bert. You'll be laughing if you're not careful. Hey, don't stop me. I could do with a good laugh, love. It's all right, sorry, me, Mrs. Hall, your favourite lodger. She in? No. Hey, any replies? Just the one. Ah, I... Well, it's better than those. Oh, yeah, certainly that. Better than the hot sausage up your nose. <laughs> this writing looks familiar. Perhaps it's from one of them uh, multinational window cleaning operations, what are making more of a, uh, a takeover than buying your house stand. Perhaps they, uh, they want you to be a director or a, or, a, or a sleeping partner or something. Well, is it a good offer or what? It's from our elder. This is old. This is Elder Ogden. That's our elder, isn't it? Well, I can't think of any other Elder Ogden, not offhand. She wants to buy the round. For her husband, she says. Well, if she wants to buy the round for her husband, that must mean you. Well, I'm trying to flog it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, Stan? You know what we've got here, don't you? We've got a conflict of interests. <laughs> Hey, it's Mrs. Hey, okay, what'll I do? Look, attack, mate. It's the best form of defence. Something like, um, what the hell do you think you're playing at, woman? That's what Bob Paisley always tells the Reds whenever they're in the tight corner. Oh, hello, Mrs. Oh, fancy seeing you here. I live here. What the hell do you think you're playing at, woman? You heard. Do you want me to answer that? Right, I will. I'm playing at living, correction, existing. Which is what I've been doing ever since I've had to depend on you for all my worldly goods. What do you mean, what the hell am I playing at? That's what I mean. Why the hell do you write that letter? This is my letter. Yeah, I know it is. Well, I wrote to the Carrion in reply to an advert for a window cleaning round for set. It were your round that were advertising. Yes. But it's not for sale. It is for sale. Stanley, I'm trying to keep calm, but it's not easy when you're talking to a nutcase. Now, look, I'll say it again. Your window round is not for sale, because, you see, it's your living, Stan. No round, no money. No money, no beer. You'd be an empty shell inside a week. It is for sale. It's not for sale. Uh, look, uh, perhaps I can explain. You knew about this, didn't you? You knew all the time it was this round I was applying for. Me? I had no idea. Oh, you'd lie in a church, you would, so just keep out of it. Now, Stanley, I'm waiting. What's the idea of selling up your only means of support? And mine, come to that. Well, part support in my case. Well, I don't fancy another winter out there cleaning windows, getting all frozen, you know. I mean, I'm not getting any younger, am I? It'll kill me. Got a promise? I mean it. Yeah, well, a lot of things I don't fancy at all, Stan. Like going skivvying in better homes than I've got myself. Then coming back here and trying to keep a shine on this shanty town. Always making do. But that's all there is for me. I mean, that's my lot. Same as window cleaning's yours. Well, a bit of a cheat trying to get another round, though. Expecting me to do twice as much. Yeah. Yeah, well, that word daft, I admit it. Sorry now I ever wrote that letter. Should have had more sense. And as for you, next time you fancy a bit of entertainment, try taking yourself to the pictures. Meat pies for your dinners. Great, Mrs. O. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Sold him making a joke of it. Don't be daft, Brian. They can't have you kidding. I'm not, ma'am. 
Look, the police came round last night and took me down the station. They charged me for wounding this fella. But you didn't wound him, love. I mean, the hospital said he was better. I mean, how can somebody wound be wounded if he's all right? It's when I thumped him. Brian, you were defending yourself. He was trying to rob you. Ma'am, I used too much force on him. How can you use too much force hey, hey, on hey, somebody? Hey, hey, what the hell's going on? Bert. Dad, I've been arrested. What? That lad, he's not dead, is he? No, he's not dead, but, but they said I nearly killed him. All right, just calm down, Brian. Look, we'll think of something, we'll think of something. A solicitor, that's the first thing. Really, 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 really. Oh. <laughs> We've got the hand on their wallet then. Uh, wouldn't you know? All right, what's you going to have then? Uh, mine's a scotch. And, uh, So's mine. Two miles about a single sort. It's a beautiful thing to behold. Oh, the lady's a poet. Give her a... Gin and tonic, thanks. But well, do you want to join in, Audrey? I mean, you might as well finish off the five. Mine's a gin and tonic too, please. What else? <laughs> We've had a great morning, haven't we, darling? Fabulous. What have you been doing? Well, oh, just wandering around Chester, sort of, uh, just like a couple of tourists, really. <laughs> I enjoyed it. So did I. And we didn't spend a thing. We just go to show. The simple pleasures are best. There we are, my dear. One for you. Cheers, son. Cheers. What else have we didn't spend a thing? Not quite true. We did buy a lot of nosh. Oh, yeah, well, I suppose the cupboard would be getting a bit bare at home. Home? Got to do with the home. For the party I'm giving tonight, and you're all invited. Oh, thank you very much. I could do with an ease up after selling cornflakes all day. Well, I'm not sure Mrs. Walker would let me have it off. Oh, of course she will. I'll tickle her fancy till she does. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Where are you having this party? My place. But your place is my place at the moment. I've noticed something about you, son. You're always quibbling about minor details. Uh, oh, here's somebody else who's invited. Uh, Vera, you're invited to a party. You and all your mates for the salt mine. What are you going to have to drink? Mike's in the chair. Not for me, thanks. Oh, Audrey, have you got a minute? Yeah. yeah. What can you go off to our <laughs> Why? Well, she'll tell you, kid. Come on. Audrey, your drink's here. Yeah? Mm. What is something I said? There you are, love. Get that down here. Put a lot of water with it. I don't like whiskey. Never mind that. Just get it down here and take it all in one go. Don't suffer. You know I don't like whiskey. I'll have to be getting back to work. What about Gail, Bray? She's going to be on her own with that baby. She's going to be worried sick, love. Brian? Well, I'm going to be late. What is going on? He's been arrested, hasn't he? Ferris is not lad. Yeah, unlawful wounding. He's not wounded anybody, Vera. Well, I'm only saying what they'll say. You're not police. How do you mean, arrested? Well, they've charged him, haven't they? Oh, I'll be up in court. Does Gail know? Oh, well, she was there last night when they picked him up. I wish you'd shut up, Vera. You make it sound worse than it is already. Oh, poor kid, I'll have to go there. I'll have to have a taxi Bert. Have you got a number for a taxi? Yes, love you. Yeah. I'll get it for you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, but what about shop, Audrey? Oh, to hell with the shop. Arrested for doing right? It doesn't make sense. That's what I've just said. Anyway, they're going to get him a solicitor out, you love. Hey, and money's no object. Kid. We'll have a whip round in the factory, so don't you worry about money. He could go to prison, you know, Vera. Oh, no way. He could. There's a taxi here, love. Uh, Randall's. I'll ring them for you. Oh, lovely. Gail must be frantic. Three, three, four. Gail, lovey. It's your mum. Hiya. Hi. Where's Nicky? Having his nap. Oh, what a business, eh? Have you seen Brian? Just about. He, he was at Ivy's. You all right? <sighs> you know. He wasn't for telling Ivy and Bert, but they'd have found out. Well, I hope you were for telling me. <laughs> You're made of tougher stuff. Oh, like an old boot, you mean. <laughs> How are you feeling, Luffy? Oh, I'm all right. But last night... I thought that were it. I even thought of suicide. Oh, lovely. I did, ma'am. All three of us. Seemed the only way out. Anyway, I feel a lot better this morning. And I looked at Nicky and I thought, what are you doing, Gail Tilsley? Brian's not done nothing. He's not guilty. It's just a bit of bad luck we're having. It'll be all right. Oh. Thank the Lord. 
Do you know, I expected to come here and find you with your head underneath a cushion. I don't think I could have coped with that. I should have probably started blubbering myself. It's not often we see you crying. Oh, man. well, I do love him. My bladder is very close to my eyes sometimes. Thanks for coming. Oh. A cup of coffee? I'd look for You're supposed to be working today. Oh, if you can call it that. Bert's trying to organise a solicitor for Brian. Gail? I heard. Oh, hello, Chuck. Get your tea in a minute. Are you tired? Oh, I'm jaded. Stan? Yeah? I know it's a hard job you've got, especially for somebody who's, well, hardly a spring chicken anymore. Blooming hard. I know. But what else could you do, Chuck? I mean, jobs aren't too a penny like they were. No. Well, what exactly did you have in mind when you thought of selling up? Oh, I thought I'd get some, you know, light labouring job or something, till I do my pension. Ah, but supposing you hadn't? We'd be in Dickie's Meadow, wouldn't we? Yeah, we would, Chuck. Oh, I know we've never had much, but... Well, we've never gone short of the necessaries, like food and that. No. Well, we'll just have to stick it out. Me skivvying, you going up them ladders. Just hope us legs will last out. <laughs> then we can draw us pensions together. Like Darby and Joe. Yeah. Not such a bad prospect when you come to think about it. Is it, Chuck? All right, lad. <laughs> Oh, oh, yes. 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 Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's a very merry sort of person, your father, isn't he? Yeah. So was old King Cole. Oh, it can't be that old, surely. I mean, it doesn't act old. You reckon? In fact, yeah. sometimes you seem older than he does. Well, I mean, I think it's, it's when you're looking serious, you know, when you weigh down with worry and responsibility, I expect. Thanks. Have you got your father and, and Sylvia at the courting? Well, sort of. Mm -hmm. He's having a last fling and she's supplying the adrenaline. Well, you can't blame him or her. I'm not. I just wish I was having as much fun. Oh, so do I. He's a great guy, he says. But he dances like a witch doctor. Right, come way. on, mate. Cut the shank pile. Oh, dear. <laughs> you dance. When I'm in the mood. I bet I get you in the mood before the night is through. I wouldn't put money on it. What's wrong with you? Well, how would you feel if it was your old woman that was doing all the running, eh? Flashing a big wad, pulling all the blokes, life and soul of everything like it is my old man. It could be very damaging to the personality, very bruising to the ego. Ah, do you think you're going to turn into a peeping dumb or something? Very probably. Do you want a drink? Yeah, something long and cool, please, Dad. Little boys in the back. Yeah. I know what you've been doing, he said. <laughs> hey, that was good, that, and it was clean and all. Oh, yeah, well, it's very dirty in the mind, you know. That's the secret of Max Miller's success. All the dirt was in the punter's mind, you see. That's the secret of it all. Oh, hello. Don't hello. see the rabbit, will you? <laughs> hey, he's funny, our old man kid. He knows, he knows more gags than Jimmy Dow, but. Yeah, and I've heard all of them. <laughs> I hope he said, like father, like son. Why are you? Such a misery, guts. Oh, he'd be all right. He'll be all right once he turns 60. Because that's when life begins, really begins. After that, it's all a bonus. Hey, some bonus. Well, oh, <laughs> some bonus. Oh, yeah. He loves it, isn't he? My silver. And she loves me, you know. She loves you. Hey, you want to be careful, you know. Yeah. She'll be dragging around jewelry shops next week. Well, I could do worse, couldn't I, with my money? I could leave it all to him. <laughs> He'd be lucky. Is he serious? Will he pop the question? 
wouldn't surprise me if next time he came up here she was Mrs. Borden. I mean, to a bloke that bought a circus man, a woman more than half his age is a mere bag of tell. Hey, I'll tell you what, kid, I think I'm jealous. Uh, hey, I know oh, I am. Look at me, this. She snapped. Oh, <laughs> Couldn't you sleep? No, love. Me neither. I think uh, what I'll do, love, I'll go to the doctors and get her some of morning, eh? Yeah. We're not going to help our brain, are we, if we make ourselves ill? No. There's no tell wrong, is there, love? No. There is, isn't there? Bert? Yes, love, there is. Oh, what? Well, you know that letter, um... Well, it wasn't from the doll. Well, what was it? A summons, kid. To go to court for not declaring me earnings. Oh. Oh, birds. I know, love. I don't know. It doesn't rain but what it pours, does it? Come on, don't cry, kid. Oh, birds. What have we done wrong? What's happening to us? I don't know, love. Listen, we must let our Brian and Gail know what happens. Happens they've got enough on their plate. Promise me. I promise, love. I've managed to keep it from them for one day, haven't I? Lordship's still off, is he? Yeah. It's just me who woke up and thought, aye, aye, there's something missing from my bed. Can't stop thinking about it. Well, you've got to. It'll be all right. Suppose it's not gonna get sent to jail. You won't. What's gonna happen to you and Nicky and this house? I won't let them take you. I tell you, it's ten. Oh, come on, who's getting 15% riders these days? Aspinalls, that's what I'm trying to say. 15p more like. No, I'll burn it oh. last night. Machinist dressers all alike are getting taken. Isn't that right, Bernard? What right? Ten percent at Aspinalls. Twelve. Well, why did you go and tell me ten, then? When did I say that? Last night. You said you'd met that lad at Boilers at Pettigill's. And I said ten, did I? Oh, listen to him. Well, as long as he's not negotiating for us. Mm. You know, you get more like your dad every day. Right, Bernard, near a minute. Yes, Mr. Baldwin. Well, get on with it, you lot. Right, you haven't forgotten where you're going today, have you? Hartley Pool. Hartley Pool. Good, right, there's your pool list. Now, small and medium are already in packing large, but a bit of luck we should have by lunchtime. Yeah. And they have to be at Johnson's today. Yeah. And do you know why? No. Because I promised them this one. Oh. And when they find out that I can do what I promise, they are going to be back, aren't they? And they are going to place a very large order. Savvy? Yeah. Right, you get loaded what's already there, and I'll see if I can G him up a bit in here. Oh, what do you think? Oh, Hey, listen, it's that time you can see Brian, you know. Has he been to see a solicitor yet? No, he's waiting for his bus to come back off his holidays. Oh, oh. I've already put him there. I know, Lord. Ivy, can you work out his machine till I get this Johnson order out? Oh, all right. Uh, have you heard Aspinalls have got up in 10% rise? Is that a fact? As true as I'm sat here. Well, I'm glad you told me. Oh, that's all right. I was thinking of giving you lot 20%. I'll have to rethink now. Yeah. <laughs> Give us 20. <coughs> Do you think he meant it? Did he echoes lie? Come on then, girls. Chop, chop, chop. Come on. Hey, I wonder how much there's in this tin. So he's got a 10 court twice, has he? Yeah. First time at this thug's trial. Well, he's got to be a witness there as well. Yeah, witness for the police. 
and a week later he has his own trial. Yeah. Yeah. Only this time the police bring evidence against him. Blimey, Charlie. Hey, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking it's a daft world we've brought you into, aren't you? Hey, I forgot to ask. Did you hear any more about that business with the door people? Uh, no, kid. No, I haven't heard anything. Thanks very much. Oh, well, that's a good sign then, isn't it? Yeah, we'll uh, just have to wait and see, I suppose. I haven't told Brian yet, but I read about a case in the paper. A man up for unlawful wounding. Uh. Similar charge to Brian. Yeah. He got sent to prison for three years. Oh, well, I mean, that all depends on the thingamajig, doesn't it? I mean, the circumstances. You see, well, Brian was acting in self-defence, wasn't he? So Police he's don't think that, do they? Ah, oh, well, they have it to do, don't they, love? I mean, it's the letter of the law, well, isn't it? Well, it's a rotten law. Yeah, I know that, but, I mean, this lad in the paper, it's not the same case as uh, Brian, is it? No. You see, I mean, they might just find Brian guilty. Technically, that is, you know. But then just go easy on him. I hope so. Yeah, well, waiting's the worst part, love. <laughs> we were both up at six o'clock this morning. Were you? <laughs> and I bet you were flat out, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that face. I think he's going to be a judge when he grows up. Are you going to be a judge when you grow up? Let us all off. <laughs> oh, there we go. Thank you. Uh, and a small white slice, please. I'll tell you what I do find, though. Um, you know I'm stopping at Darcy Tanner's? Yes. Well, aren't them walls thin? Well, no exaggeration. You can hear every word that goes on. I have to put the telly on sometimes for a bit of peace and quiet. Anything else? Uh, no, that's all, thank right. you. Mind you, a right circus it sounds and all. I mean, there's Hilda shouting at Stan, and then Stan shouting at Hilda. I swear I'm going to find one of them in a pool of blood. <laughs> Morning. Oh, talk of the devil. Uh, hello, Hilda. Well, still on your own, are you? Yeah. Mm. Oh, I've served my time behind that counter. Well, you'll remember, won't you? Uh, yes. You know, when our Irma had the shop. Mm. Mind you, I think he's let it go a bit since then. That's uh, two pounds, one P, please. Oh. Be a facer for you, though, won't it? I mean, you have to have the knack of getting on with folk as well. It's not all slicing bacon. <laughs> and then there's the money, of course. Oh, there's always a risk employing anybody when there's that to take care of. Thank you. Uh, oh, bye. Bye. Sit down, lovely. Bye. Now then, Hilda. Oh, a bag of sugar and half a pound of marge, please. Oh, right. You, uh, you know her then, do you? Emily. I've met her the odd once or twice, mm. you know. You know, you'd never believe it to look at her, but she's had two husbands, you know. First got shot, second went off his rocker. Fancy. Oh, I mean, anybody can be unlucky once, but twice. Well, you begin to wonder, don't you? Oh, you do. Oh, there's a few things I could tell you about folk round here. I bet. <laughs> I mean, I've noticed myself over the walls are that thin, you can hear every word that goes on. Can't you? Oh, I. Now, is there our else, or is that it? I'd better give us to do than standing there watching us. Well, I hope he's satisfied because it should be Guinness Book of Records what we've done this morning. Well, there you go, as good as you can. Excuse me, then. Right, how long do you think it's going to take? Oh, about half an hour, I think. Oh, uh, this to help your brine out, is it? Yeah, why don't you yeah. put some in it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, why don't I? Here, you know this load's got to be out by lunchtime, don't you? Oh, of course not going to be, though, Mr. Baldwin. We're doing his best. Yeah, I know, but I mean for the sake of, what, 25, 30 minutes? Here, why don't you stay, finish the order, and then go and have your lunch hour, OK? You must be joking. Oh, we've got to have his dinner, Mr. Baldwin. Oh, we well, have that. I've never asked you before, have I? No, only because you know what we'd say. Yeah, I know, but this is a very important order. I don't mean just for me, I mean for your jobs as well. I mean, if Johnsons get this order on time, well, <laughs> we're all laughing. But, I mean, if they don't, well... All for the sake of... Half an hour. So, uh, what do you say? Eh? Well, uh, we don't make no to make it. I mean, I'm only going over the road. Well, I don't know what Union's going to have to say. So you're staying, getting finished, will you? Yeah, yeah, all right, all right, right then. You are doing yourselves a great favour. I promise you that. It's not right, you know. I don't. If it'll bring more orders in, love, rules are made to be abided by. Oh, oh I just shut up. <laughs> And you're quite settled over there, are you? Oh, just about, Mrs. Walker. I mean, it's no distance, is it? Well, there, 
Hello, Mrs. Walker. Hello, uh, Mrs. Walker. I've seen some material for the curtain, so is it all right if I go and order them? Of course it is, if you like it. Oh, yes, I do. And, and they said if I let them know definitely, get on with them this afternoon. So I'll go and do that and pop back later. All right? Yeah, OK. Bye, Mrs. Walker. You obviously have great faith in your wife's judgment. I have, Mrs. Walker. She chose me, didn't she? How is life treating you then, Edward? Still refuse disposaling? I wouldn't be without it. You know, they say when you've been on the bins, you never go back to working indoors. You've never worked indoors? Doesn't mean you can't go back to it. <laughs> 48, Chuck. Oh, yeah. And one for yourself. Cheers. <laughs> Excuse me. Because <coughs> I want to get our Bernard a prime. All right, Hello. 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 Hey, I'll tell you what, I will so. only flirt you now and end over there. Yes, ladies. A pint of dick out and a glass of cider and... Uh... Oh, and a pint of lager. A pint? A pint? I'm that dry, I could suffer that full. I know, but a pint, though. There's no losses I can't have a pint, is there, Mrs Walker? <laughs> Not as far as I know, dear. Custom, perhaps? President, perhaps? But certainly no law. Well, customer, whatever it is, can take a run and jump. Been keeping you at it, has he? Oh, it's been murder, kid. It's been murder, hasn't it? Yeah. We're supposed to have cells over there. Yeah. We've been slaving all this time, you know. We've only just finished. You must love him. <laughs> Do you know I think he hypnotises us? I do. He only has to start talking. It's, yes, Mr Baldwin. No, Mr Baldwin. I'll tell you what, he's a demon. He is. That's what he is. Now, you know where you're going, don't you? Hartley Pool. Right, well, there's no rush. They'll open till late. Don't worry, Mr Baldwin. I'll be there. Look here, be all right. It's a big lad now, mate. On your way before she wants to go with you in case you get lost. Sir, I love. You know, it hurts me to say it. What? You and your mates, you did very well this morning getting that order out. Hey, I'm a married woman, you know. I know, there's a trouble when you get to my age. All the gorgeous ones are spoken for. Sorry if it's a bit dry. I have to put it back in the oven to keep warm, didn't I? Well, he made out it were an important order, love. He had to go off this afternoon. Hey, love, do you want some more gravy on it? No, thanks. I've eaten worse. Charming. Thanks very much. Mm. You managed to get round to see our brain, then? Yeah. And what a shocker and all. What? Well, I'm standing at the bus stop, right? Guess who gives me a lift? Jack, don't we? Crikey, Bert, I thought you were going to tell me Nicky were poorly or something. No, love. For having me to death. I'm sorry, Chuck, no. Well, go on, then. What? Jack Duckworth. Yeah, well, I'm saying, there he is working on the side for that minicab firm, right? He's claiming everything he can from the Social Security insane now. And the irony being, he gives me a lift and I'm the one being done for non-declaration of earnings. Well, it's sort of always get away with hope, don't they? That's just what he said. Then burst out laughing. Well, he would, wouldn't he? Well, girl there. Yeah. Hey, look. You didn't say up, did you, to her? What about me being... Uh, I yeah. don't you mean. No, of course not, love, no. I mean, you've got enough on the plates without me starting, haven't they? I think I can safely leave you both to it, can't I, Elizabeth? Well, I'll give you a shout if you need it, shall I? Oh, my dear, shout's the last thing I want to hear. I'll yodel if you like. Oh, give over. Look, there are folks that tip and there are folks that don't. It doesn't matter who's behind the bar. Oh, I don't know, Betty. I think most folk notice the difference. Yes, well, let's see you work your charms on your next customer. Yes, Silver. Eh, uh, a light tail, please, Chuck. Right. Did you say have one yourself? You are. It's a thing folks say sometimes, Silver. Have one yourself, Betty, they say. Oh, do they? About time you started returning the compliment then, isn't it? Buying one or two back for them of us this side of the bar. Well, <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. Hello, love. love. Oh, Fred. Hello, love. Curtain's ordered then. Yes, it comes to uh, 58 pounds. Eh? And, say, a pound or two for the tapes. Uh, say 60. 
60 quid? Shh, no need to shout. I'm not paying 60 quid for a bit of cloth to hang in front of the windows. Look, they're good curtains, these, Fred. They're lined and everything. Well, you can take them back and tell them we're not having them 60 quid. Oh, yes, we are. I'm not going down there again making a fool of myself. We're having them if I've got to pay for them myself. 60 flaming quid. Oh, dear. You know, we have the same trouble, you and me. Really? Yeah, you're Fred and my stand. <coughs> Tight as bottle tops when it comes to out that's not going into their bellies. No, I'll tell you what I found out, shall I? What's that, Tilda? Well, never talk money to a fellow when he's sober. Make sure he's got a pint or two inside him first. <laughs> you could be right. Get a tip there, then, did you? Oh, of course, Betty. Never buy curtains for a fella when he's sober. Oh, I'm ready for this, Kate. Yeah, you oh, say hello. Oh, yeah. Have some, you want to get yourselves out, you know, you and Bert. Cheer yourselves up. Yeah, won't make his court case go away, though, Vera, will it? Oh, I don't no. know. Could get a few rum and blacks down, yeah? Yeah, well, might do tonight, we'll see. Well, I'll tell you what, if you don't want to go, send Bert out with me. I'll take his mind off at court case for him. Oh, can you squeeze another one out there? Hey, shall I ask my to mouse when we're getting his rises? Well, you're not likely to tell you now, is it? Uh, Mr Baldwin, is it this week we're getting his rises? Uh. What rises in that? You know, that 15%. This week? No. Well, what about next week? Next week? Uh, no, no, no. Well, what about week after, then? Vera, if I give you lot 15% rises, I'll be closing a fortnight. And remember what Mrs Thatcher said. We have to keep the rises down for the good of the country. Well, I didn't vote for that lot. No, and I didn't either. Well, I bet you didn't, but I did, you see. So I've got to support her now, haven't I? Well, come on, lasses. I mean, there's not only me after this rise, you know. We'll do it at the right time through the right channels. Well, what do you mean, right channels? You're at right channels, aren't you? Well, yeah. Yeah, that's what I like to see. Democracy in action. Does my heart good to see it. You know what we should have done, don't you? What? We should have done our negotiating this morning when you were sweating up bricks on getting that blasted order out. Mm. Hey, yeah. Uh, you'd have changed this tune all right then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, why didn't we then? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll have to come in here more often, won't I? Now that there's uh, someone to come in for. Oh, you mean the special offer on the biscuit? No, I was uh, I was thinking more of the uh, changes in staff, you know. Oh. Hello, lovely. Hi, yeah. Just loiter your nail up with intent. A bottle of milk and uh, what else were it? Well, how should I know? Small tin of red salmon. Right. Did you know you're here? What's it to do with you, Lynch? Well, I thought you might have got lost, love. Forgotten where you live. It's not that long since you moved, is it? That's 72 bet, love. Sorry, love. Shall I see you across road, love? In case any cars come in. You're always shouting your gob off you, aren't you? I'll see you later, Audrey. When it's a little bit quieter. Ta-da, love. I hope I haven't spoiled something rare and wonderful. I thought I were never going to shift it off and He's been nosing in and out of that freezer. Risking frostbite for you, must be keen. Oh, don't. How long is it since he were married? It can only be a few months. Long enough for the honeymoon to be over from what I've seen. Oh, Fury. I should be on my guard, then. Audrey, keep your clothes side up. OK. Hello there. We fancy the walk, so we... We ended up on your doorstep. Hey, you did right, didn't you? Is Ivy not in? Yeah. Oh, stairs, love. I'll be down in a minute. Oh, OK. Actually, Dad, uh, we thought we might go up later on for a drink. You know, that's if we can find somebody to babysit. Mentioning no name. Ah, well, uh, we're supposed to be going out ourselves. Oh, uh, well. Is it something special or is it just... No, a... we're just going out for a drink, I suppose, that's all. Oh, well, you know, with us having this court case, I'm going to have our red like we thought well, it might be nice to go for a while. already going out, Brian. Yeah, I mean, your mum can go any time, can't you? Well, I mean, I'm not fussy. We'll have to see what your mum says, eh? See what your mum says about what? Hi, oh. Ivy. Hello, love. Oh, let me look at that baby, eh? Chut, you. Hey, you. Love. Hey, love, what do you want to do tonight? Oh, we're going out, aren't we, love? Hey, is he sleeping any better? Mm. This last couple of nights, yeah. Chut. It's only Dad said that he wouldn't mind babysitting, Mum. Uh, well, that's if you don't. Well, we said we were going out, love. Yeah, no, look, but I just thought perhaps they'd like an hour or two on their own, you know. Yeah. We just thought it might be nice to go for a change. Well, it might be nice for us as well, Brian. It might come as a surprise, love, but... Uh... Mum, I'm in court in a couple of weeks. 
Look, you do much like having this thing hanging over your head. Oh, don't we? Haven't we know more about it than you think we do? Hey. You have heard about that dough business, haven't you? Oh, in my big mouth. Yes, look, yes, I have. Hey, what's been happening? Well, they're going to summons me, aren't they? <laughs> what? They're going to take you to court? Yeah. Why didn't you say something? Well, I mean, you've got enough on your minds, haven't you? Without me adding to it. Oh, I could cut my tongue out. Hey, no, Ivy, it's all right. Oh, don't cut your tongue out, love. You see, I'll have nobody to nag me. I couldn't stand the silence. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll all stop in and we'll all babysit. We'll have a few drinks in here, eh? Yeah. That's it. And if we get bored, well, we can practice cross-examining each other, can't we? Anybody at home? Hello? I'm supposed to deliver a load here. You have a job on. I was told you stopped open while late. Not anymore, we don't. The form's gone bust. Gone bust? End of last week. Nobody told us. Nobody told us either, either, bonny lad. Have you heard of the four minute warning? We didn't even get that. But I brought a load here from Weatherfield. What am I supposed to do with it now? Oh, eh. Yeah. Do you really want us to tell you? Oh, I'm sick of you and your flaming dips. Then why not admit it, Betty? I'm the one that gets them, that's all. Of course you're not. I mean, there's three of us work behind this bar. Well, most of the time, two of us work while you're off preening yourself. You are? You words. Yes, sir. Uh, a sweet cherry, Betty, please. Certainly, dear. Oh, hello. Oh, look. I wouldn't have put you down as an early starter where drink is concerned. Early starter, early finisher, actually. Oh, <laughs> Let me buy you one. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I won't say no to a gin, please. Oh, and a tonic? Yes, please. Oh, OK, the Deirdre's a bit off colour, isn't she? Oh, yeah, she looks ever so peaky. She popped in this morning, but I says I could manage a shop by myself. It's unfortunate, with Alf being away. Oh, well, what I can do, I will. What I can't, I won't. I mean, come on, it's only a tatty little corner shop when all's said and done. There's no point in killing yourself over it. No, I suppose not. I'm supposed to be open now, as a matter of fact, but honestly, enough is enough. I think I'll take root if I stand behind that counter much longer today. Yeah. Thank you. That's 90 feet. And uh, will you join us, Betty? Oh, thank you. Art is kind of you. Thank you, sir. Cheers, Bobby. That's very kind. Oh, and the one. Uh, uh, well, new system. What new system? Separate glasses. Then we'll see who contributes what, won't we? Fred. What? <clears throat> Have you seen this carry-on? What? Any tips you get from now on into your own glass. Oh, come on. Oh, no, I've been told that you two do all the work. So you'll have nothing to worry about, will you? Uh, which one of these is yours, or need not be bothered to ask? No point in false modesty. Well, I've never heard outside bar me. Oh, it don't matter, Fred, if she wants to be like that. I mean, I'm not going to be the one that loses out. <laughs> Suppose I get the half, do I? No, you don't. You keep the little one. One large scotch for one large-hearted fella. She's trying to be funny? No. I'm just trying to give first-class service, as usual, with a merry quip and a smile. I'll settle for the scotch. There. And, uh... Yes? Yeah? Packet of peanuts. Oh, yeah. Go on, take one for yourself while you're at it. God bless you, sir. You make it very obvious. <laughs> and it's Bet into an early lead. You'll put folk off coming in, you will. Oh, Bet, a pint for Eddie while you're out of that, please, if uh, there's any left. Certainly, Mr. Baldwin. Oh, cheers, mate. I mentioned. Still uh, making a few bob over there, are you? Managing to keep our head above water. Yeah, yeah I'm sure, yeah. Well, I must admit things were a bit rough at one time, but uh, we got a very large order away today, and, uh, well, what comes out of that could keep us well into next year. 
Oh, can't be bad. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm late opening, lovey. I always was a bad getter up. <laughs> Come on. Have you been waiting long? Hey, listen, kid, I don't know why I don't put a notice up on that door, you know, saying new opening time. That save a lot of trouble. Hey, you know, that's not a bad idea. Oh, help yourself to what you want, will you? I must put some eating on it. It'll be like a fridge back there. <laughs> hey, well, I only wanted a packet of biscuits, oh. you know. Something to nibble on at work. Takes my mind off my job. Oh, these will do, kid. How much have I? Oh, I don't know. I fancy. Take a look when you're coming next time. I can't be doing me looking at prices this time of the morning. I'm bleary-eyed enough as it is. Hey, listen, kid, do you think you and this job are so it to each other? I like it in small doses, you know, but the troubles with shops is they come in long doses and I weren't blessed with too much staying power. Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> me neither, kid. <laughs> I tell you what, though, if I have a job going across the road, I'll give you a shout. All oh, right. Better than all camp over there, you know, to play cards right, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, love. See ya. See ya to our lovey. Oh... Bread and cakes order, or a cup of tea. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hey, somebody congratulate me, I'm a minute early. Oh, lags up. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm a saint compared to that Audrey. Do you know, if you showed her to watch, she'd think it were a puzzle. I know that flaming shop's never open, is it? Oh, yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what, though, kid, I wouldn't mind a business of my own, you know. Not round here, though. Somewhere like Torquay. Oh, the working class dream. Do you know, my old man's always fancied a deck chair stand in somewhere like Torquay for a couple of months it's summer. Yeah. It's, it's a chair picture in it, especially in February. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, though, Ken. Do you know, us from up north would be a roaring success in business down there. Because we're hard workers, we don't bowl. Not all of us, Vera. Now, can we get on with it, please, before dinner bell goes? Don't bother. Hey? I said, don't bother starting up. Right, Harvey, I want everyone in here, and by that I mean everybody. I've got something I want to tell you. I wonder what he wants to tell us. Well, hardly that he thinks we're wonderful, but look on his face. Hey, I know, lass, he's, he's going to give us a rise like Aspinall's have got. He is, he always looks like that when he asks about with some brass. <laughs> I believe that when I hear it, Vera. <laughs> Be a devil, put your new jacket on. No, not for work. Businessmen go to work in their best suits. And the next best thing to an oily rag. Not a businessman. You've got to have some ambition, Brian. Ah, so you reckon me putting my new jacket on's going to change me your future, do you? It might. You might be snapped up as a film star. Oh, some hopes. The only ambition I've got at the moment is to keep out of strange ways. Oh, Brian. No, I'm sorry, love. I said I wouldn't look on the black side. I know it's not easy to be bright and cheerful. My heart falls into my boots about a dozen times a day. But you're not going to prison, really. Even if they wanted to take you, I wouldn't listen. So what do you do? Walk me up in the attic and feed me on bread and cheese <laughs> at the dark of night, like a prisoner of war? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Anyway, love, runs back today, so I'm going to ask him if he can find me a good solicitor. Or a bad one. And by bad, I mean someone who might be able to swing some at for you, like bribe the chief constable. I never thought of that. I'll buy my Mars bar. Mwah. Be good, eh? Yeah, see ya. <laughs> Tell Ron Sykes if you get someone to get you off, I'll attend to his every need. Well, I don't know about that, love. You might put him off. <laughs> it's like waiting for flipping jury to come back, isn't it? I hope we don't want me to load the van up again. I've just unloaded it. It took me an hour and a half to do it. Oh, stop bleating about that bleeding van, Bernard. Oh, leave lad alone. Hey, they're coming. Right, is everybody here, then? I know what you're going to say, Mr Baldwin. You're going to give us a rise like Aspinall's have got, in appreciation of all our good work. <laughs> Will you shut up here and let him get on with it? Oh, pardon me for living. Right, now, you all know about Johnson's going bust, don't you? Leaving us with, what, uh, three weeks' production on our hands, right? At least. Well, you said you could get rid of that lot. Easy as licking a stamp, you Yeah, well, it hasn't been easy. I mean, it's a very bad time. I mean, it's too late for Christmas and spring's too far away. What about all them contacts you're all us boasting about? Well, that's the same thing. They're all running very lean businesses, not going out with their checkbooks and only ordering when the shelves are empty. Well, hadn't you better tell us what you have to tell us, Mr Baldwin? Yeah, a good idea. Oh, well, and it won't take very long, Gloria. I am running a very lean business myself. Oh. It's been a... Well, it's been a balancing act. And Johnson's going over the top. It's just about push me over the edge. Now, there is no way that I can carry on producing gear that I cannot get rid of, right? And I cannot make this place into a warehouse because my bank manager won't let me. So the situation is this. We either find further outlets or it's redundancies or this place goes for a burden. You're having as well. No, I'm, no, I'm not. Oh, don't be so stupid, Vera. You said redundancies, Mr. Yeah, Baldwin. Right. Well, how many redundancies? Well, I don't know, Gloria. I made a breakdown yet. I mean, it's only a rule of thumb, but I'd say we'd be heading in the right direction if we got, what, uh, a 
third? Hey! Uh, 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 at least. Alton, isn't it? Just like that. Yeah. yeah. Bias? Yeah. Well, I don't think my members are going to stand for this, Mr. Moore. No, 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 I can hold them off. What else can he do, Ida? He's explained the situation. Oh, says we've got to have redundancies. There's other ways than that. The Zonic management says we've got to have them. Yes, both of them, love. There is another way round. Pack the whole lot in. I mean other ways than that. Now, listen, I gave it to you straight as I saw it. And don't forget, it's my neck as well as yours, you know. Now, listen, you lot, it's either some of you get the chop or you all get the chop. Now, you work it out amongst yourselves. But I tell you what, I am having no aggro. You either give me, what, say, 12 bodies well, it's been nice knowing you. Oh, well, that's yeah. hardly a choice, is it, Mr. Baldwin? I mean, it's Hobson's choice. No, I'd say it must more the devil or the deep blue sea, right? Now, I want an answer by the end of the day. You know, it's a pleasure to find you all. Now, don't you tell her. Ooh, the tilt's frightening you, they do me. You've got to be firm with them, love. Show them who's boss. Oh, is that it? All right. On your way to look gorgeous behind the Rover's bar, are you? Look like a rat bag, you mean. I was supposed to have my hair done this morning, but my hairdresser's gone to put a good word in for Rex's husband. He's up in court for signing a name on a cheque. Well, it don't look so bad. Well, he's not perfect, love, and I have a position to keep up. Well, I'll give you a shampoo and set if you like. What with those parts? <laughs> I have served my time to hairdressing, I'll have you know. Well, when I say time, I've done six months. But I'm very deft. We well, haven't got time, have you? No, but I love a challenge. Here? Where else? I could keep an eye on the shop then. You don't ride a unicycle for an encore, do you? Only on Sundays. All right, I'll be down about two. <laughs> right. You make a mess of it and I'll kill you, lady. Go on. I'll see you, lovey. Bye. Bye. Flaming Harry. Hey. Has this bloke got an anchor in his boot? He doesn't use his brakes for stopping. They're non-existent. <laughs> Haven't you seen them holes in the floor? He sticks his legs through them and slides his feet on the road. <laughs> hey, what time's it, Ginge? Just gone at 11. Oh, hey, I'm tired today. As if I've got no strength. <laughs> Gail's uh, uh, very demanding, is she? Don't you think of nothing else? No, I've been. <laughs> aye, aye. Playboy Ron Sykes is here. Just back from spending all bread we make for him in flesh pots of Europe. Hey, you speak of the English? Which way to Bannydorm? Turn right it go out, then straight on past Palace Bingo Hall, mate. Hello, lads. Hello, Hello Ron. You both look nice and pale, as if you've been looking after me in better than you normally do. Hey, we got Queen's the Wall for industry while you've been away, isn't that right, Bright? Aye, uh, dead right. Ah, uh, what did you get for all them foreigners you've been doing? Oh, wait. Did you get me card? No. I didn't send one. He's not come back human, that's for sure. Hey, Ginge, when do you reckon you should tell him about that robbery and that? I'd tell him now. I mean, you was going to save the family jewels, didn't you? He might even show you his holiday snaps. What's new then, lads? Well, Ron, um... Actually, while you're away, we... We have had a bit of excitement. Oh, why? A robbery. A what? A robbery. Stick up. Iced. Just like out of Sweeney, boss. Ginger. And Brian here fought him off single-handed without a thought for his life. Will you shut up, Ginger, and let me tell him what really happened? I wish somebody would. Well, Ron, one night when I was working on the pumps, about three weeks ago, this bird comes up to the kiosk and sort of spun some tale about a car not working. So uh, I nipped out to have a look at it, and this bloke goes in behind me and gets his hand in the till. So it's a quick one-two from battling Brian here, and a bloke's twitching on floor thinking he's been run over. There's just one snag, though, isn't there, Brian? Yeah. What snag's that? Well, the police reckon I hit him too hard. They're gonna do me for wounding the guy. Well, can you believe it? He has a go, clobbers a robber, and then gets nicked himself. So, well, as you see, Ron, I'm in a bit of a mess, like, and... Well, I want to know if you can help me. Do you want to know what I think, Brian? I think you deserve everything you get. Because you're a right burke, aren't you? I told you, never open that kiosk door to anybody. I suppose you're nice looking, this bird, won't you? So out you go, like Sir Galahad. Smoothing down your curly hair. What a stupid thing to do. And I don't help stupid people. It's a rule I have. Oh, the lousy oh, rotten. Oh, he's flimmin' it. Look at that expecting out from him. Well, I still 
say Baldwin's up to something, Miss Howell? I don't know, Vera. He told Mrs. Walkley he was in lumber last night, and she said he was very upset. Oh, it's slime, you know. It's as sly as a cat, it is. Oh, don't put your bones in, then. Cats are going down, Swanee. Snap, Vera. Double scotch? No, I better make it a single. Don't want to upset them. I think you're wise. Is it serious? Why, is somebody saying it isn't? What do I have to do? Show them a bank overdraft or something. You can't blame them, Mike, some of the strokes you've pulled. This is not a trick. Honest. We are in Stuck. And they better believe it. I'm sorry, then. I see Elsie's name's at top of the list. Should be happy about that, I don't think. How long's she been weird now? Oh, three months at most. Hey, that's an idea. Does previous service count? No. Well, I think it should do. Let's have a look at this list. If you don't mind me saying so, we definitely do seem to be assuming there's going to be some redundancies. Exactly. I say we sit tight and do no. Oh, and turn up one morning and find factory gates locked in his faces. Well, what are the alternatives? Now, what did the union say? Well, Ronnie Caton did say we we're going to ask Baldwin for a meeting. But you know what he's like. Can't even keep his pipe lit. Hey, I don't see your Bernard's name on this list. Well, he's van driver. He's still on a being here five minutes. All right, if he gets made redundant, there'll be nobody to drive. Van William Baldwin will still have to set somebody else on. You can't make exceptions, Ivy. I won't see Bernard's name on this list. She puddled a what? Hi, aye, there you are. I thought you'd be in here boozing. Hey, Bert, have you? Hold have on. What's happening? Hold on. Huh? I'll tell him. Tell me what? <laughs> tell me what? Yes, Bert. Uh, just half, please, Fred. Uh, do you want another look? No. Never rains, but what it pours, eh, Bert? Fred! Well, I mean, it doesn't bear thinking about, does it? You and your missus on the King Cole, the doll, you know. What's he on about? I'm not on the doll, it's just the... What? Well, Baldwin's in a mess, love. He's asked for redundancies. There you go. Bricks may have to take your money, Bert. Be a big blow to this boozer, it will. A very big blow. Uh, how many redundancies, then? I mean, like who? Well, you better come have a chat at lasses. Freddy. The answer, Lynch, is no. I only want half an hour off to have me heard done. Yeah, well, I haven't forgotten you were trying to corner them tips. Oh, well, I'll just have to tell Audrey how you've stopped her making a few bob on the side. Audrey? Yeah, it was her what was going to do me her. Oh, well, look, Bet, if, uh, well, if you're just going to pop up the road, well, it'll be all right. No, no more than half an hour, mind. You're a doll, Fred. What are you? I'm a doll. Shop! Yonking all the way down the street. <laughs> Actually, I was coughing very. Are you working here? Right. Serving? Right. Oh. Hello? Hello? Oh, oh sorry, love. I can only do one thing at a time. I don't know about you. Yeah. Right. Now, speak now for every old GP. Well, uh, could I just have a, a little tin of pineapple chunks? Of course you can, love it. There's no need to sound so apologetic. I mean, they can't do you for eating pineapple chunks, can they? Oh. <laughs> there you are. Oh, thank you. Don't mention it. Well, here I am, all ready to be transformed from a beautiful princess into an even beautifuler princess, I am oh. We've got some care to go through to the salon. Barry will be looking after you today. Oh, Barry's got such strong, sensitive fingers. Drama. <laughs> right. Is there anything else, love it? Uh, no. Well, there she changed. Close the door as you go out, would you? Now, would Mother like a black see-through gown or perhaps a subtle flesh pink? Hey, does Barry do massage as well? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you know what you're doing. Well, I can always learn by my mistakes, can't I? And I still want to be a brazen blonde when you finish. I don't want to have faded. Well, I thought a nice sludge green rinse might take care of that. Oh, what else? By the way, where am I being shampooed? In the kitchen. You don't mind a sink full of greasy pots, do you? I must be mad. <laughs> oh. I won't be a minute. Be having a think. Well, I wouldn't like to be to tell them 12 that have the chips. I wouldn't either seen one of them's me. Mm. Well, little Louise Slater, I mean, she's a one parent family, you know. And she lives with a mother that's in a wheelchair. Well, what else can we do? Well, I don't know. 
He could pay us all out of his own pocket till he gets on his feet. He could sell that flashy car for a start. And what about his dad? What about him? Well, he's plenty of money now, hasn't he? He was up here the other week flashing his wallet and that bird of ease. Let him put his hand down. You're very quiet, Ivy. Yeah, just thinking. It's not more than 12 months since we never give losing his jobs a second thought. Unemployment had gone, hadn't it? We're like scarlet fever. Now it's back with us and we're more vulnerable than we ever were. We went mad imagining Will was at last giving us a living with all you'd owed to us. It doesn't owe us a living, the more than it owes a Chinaman a living. It's up to us. Hey, but what about them Japs? They seem to get on, don't they? And they've no more fingers than us. Search me. Can I have a we'll... word with you, Ivy? What do I tell him? Tell him we can't make his minds up, which we can't. Well, I'd be more direct than that. It's supposed to be a whisked in, so let him get whizzing. Gloria. Oh, just plead for time. I like working here, Ivy. So, what's the verdict? That is no answer. I've got 12 names. So what's the problem? Well, because they're not just 12 names, are they? They're 12 friends. This entire CI, you know, it's a small firm, it's a family. How do we tell any of them out there that they're going to be on Scrappy and we are not? Besides, some of them have got better reasons for keeping their jobs than some of us that have been here ages. Look, I know it's not easy, but it is necessary. I hope that lot out there believe me. I mean, I've heard different... Oh, I believe you. Oh, good. But we need more time, Mr Baldwin, to make sure we're doing best for everybody. There isn't more time. Oh, well, you'll have to get your own list out then, because we can't. All right. I'll give you one more day. Oh, well, that'll help. OK, Buster, I'm switching on. So if you lie, the machine will tell us. <laughs> <laughs> right? Are you sure you've not put too many on this side? My head keeps warting over. Maybe I should have used them rag curlers. I believe Vidal uses them all the time. Then I'd have looked like Pansy Potter. Oh. <laughs> yes. What colour were your hair originally? It's been that long, love, I've forgotten. <laughs> oh. Come on through if we know you. I think I'll make a cup of tea. China, of course. Of course, only the best for the short and curly. <laughs> <laughs> well, excuse oh, me. Hey, look. Hello, Stan. Take a seat, love. Have you come for a quick cut and blow dry job, have you? I think he could do with a new loop myself. I didn't know you did plastic surgery as well. Oh, I only want the box of matches. Oh, a likely excuse. You knew we were on our own, didn't you, two women? Oh, yes, of course he did. Men, there's only one thing to think about. He's married as well, you know, a nice little body. I know. I'll get him myself if you, if you like. Oh, wouldn't you like to stop, Stan, and brush my hair into shape? You'd like that, wouldn't you, love? Of course he I'll would. I'll put the money on the counter. <laughs> He's never moved that fast since he chased their hilda around Bluebell Woods. <laughs> I could murder that cup of tea now, love. Oh, certainly, madam. Would madam like a little woody with it now? <laughs> Go on, you headbanger. There you go. Tommy. Oh, sorry, mate. Do you want a drink? Oh, no, thank you. No, I'm just killing time waiting for a friend. I would. It's Albert. He's passed on and he's haunting us. Hey, I'm here in the flesh and I like a wrong. You know, Albert, you're like a little dog, popping out the kennel when he thinks there's a bone about. Fred, give him a drink, mate, will you? I told you we're too good to last, you know. What are you talking about? For all this easy money you've been making. You have made it easy. Easy? I've flogged myself to death over there. You could have fooled me, mate. Now, you listen, Fred. No matter what happens, it's my brains, my know-how, my get-up-and-go that kept a lot of people in a lot of work for a lot of years. And I'm proud of that. Yeah, you've lined your own pockets as well, haven't you? Well, what do you expect me to do it for free? Well, you could have done it for a lot less, like some of the bosses. <laughs> and you wouldn't have had so many free rums. Is there nothing you can do, Mr Baldwin? I mean, it'd be terrible if you had to close. Well, terrible for everybody round here. Well, that's up to the workforce, isn't it? They know the score, but I tell you this, I'm not bothered anymore. You see, I'm supposed to be the villain of this piece when I'm not. All right, I may have a decent suit on, but I've earned it. All right, Fred? Albert? Oh, dear. He is upset, isn't he? Yeah. How do you think them lasses feel over there, eh? They haven't got thousands in the bank. Good evening. Uh, can I ask you something? 
Of course, Albert. Well, why do you find the need to walk around like a Christmas tree? You know, you number the barmaid in a little pub, which isn't much more than a nail out. That is precisely why, Albert. To keep my spirits up and to bring a bit of glamour into your dull, miserable little life. Right. I'd rather look at a good cauliflower. Oh, dear. Oh, I think your hair looks very nice there. Yeah, Audrey's not made a bad job of it, has she? No, I, I couldn't believe it this afternoon when I went in the shop. I mean, I go in just for a tin of pineapple chunks and find it's been turned into a beauty salon. Where's this, then? Oh, well, Hello. The corner shop. You know, Audrey's doing hairdressing on the side, would you believe? Oh, is she? Oh, she's a case, is Audrey. She's always good for a laugh. You find that, don't you, Fred? Me? Hey. How would I know? Well, you and her are a good mate. Well, you used to be. I hardly know her. Actually, I was thinking of asking if she'd do my hair for me, because I don't seem to find a hairdresser to suit me. Oh, well, I can recommend her. It's better than going to the pictures. Why don't you try a unit? No, thank you. I'll go. Oh, just a visit, Lynn. See how you are. Oh, we're fine, aren't we? Considering. Yeah. Give us your coat. Nick, you're all right, love. Yeah, he's fine. Go up and have a look at him. He's lying in his cot, crooning away to himself. Oh, well, in a minute, love. You not heard, then? Heard what? Baldwin's asking for redundancies. I don't believe it. I don't. I don't flaming well believe it. Hey, Brian, Nicky. Come on, Brian. Don't be so touchy. Haven't they a right to be? What do you mean exactly, Ivy, is asking for redundancies? Well, a third of us have got to go. And who decided who they are? Well, that's the problem, love, isn't it? Um, we can't, love. I mean, we thought there might be other ways round it, but what they are... I mean, some are for a strike, Vera's is for a sitting, silly devil. Yeah, but you're all right, Ivy. Your supervisor, you've been there a long time. Yes, but who's to know he won't ask for another third next week, Gail? Hey, listen, look, why don't we all just emigrate? I better still lock the doors and turn the flaming gas on. Come on, Brian, snap out of it, will you? Hey. Where else is it, will you? Ron Sykes won't help him. He says everything that happened is his own fault. You're joking. She's not. The wrong devil. After what you've done for him. Well, I'll tell you where I'm going. I'm going round there right now. Oh, no, you're not, madam. Come here, Get you. Get off. Bert, he's not getting away with this. I'm telling you what, he's somebody that we can fight back. He, he owes our brain and he's going to be meant to pay. We know all that, don't we? Thank you very much. Look, you've got enough on your plate as it is, haven't you? Brian's got to stand on his own feet, all right? And you will, won't you, Brian? What's happened to all that family togetherness? Cheese, Arthur. Five, an oh. Oreo. I can hardly chastise them at work for being late if I'm late myself. Oh, I'm sorry, you know, I'm not used to getting up so early. In fact, I didn't know there were two eight o'clocks in one day till I do this job. Well, you want bold ham shorts, and oh. if you don't mind, I prefer pick a lily on them to fag ash. Quite right, my sweet. Oh, you've surfaced, have you? Oh, thank you very much. Could I have a packet of cornflakes, love? Perfect. Well, a cup of coffee's hardly going to keep me strength up, is it? And whose fault's that? You were snoring like a pig when I... Oh, did I complain? Oh, you're Aren't you? Aren't you? Have you have a fag of a food with your nerves? There's not wrong with my nerves. Well, not with a good thump at Ron Sykes from Pure. Hey, Ivy. Well, what do you expect? Do you know there's our Brian there? He risks life and limb stopping a robbery, and all he gets is a flea in his ear. I mean, he deserved a reward at least. Have you not been to sort Ron Sykes out? Yeah, I would have done as quick as a rat in a down spout. Perhaps you should ask him that instead of me. Put them out with. Wow. Women, do you know something? You've got tongues like dentist drills. Every so often you strike a nerve. Now what have I said? Well, she wanted to sort Ron Sykes out, didn't she? I managed to stop her. Whatever for? Well, that's another thing about women, you see, love. You never let your children grow up, do you? Oh. Thanks very much. You can put these on Ivy's bill, all right. All right. See you, love. See you. Oh, good morning, Mr. Tilton. Good morning, Mavie. I'm at work. Oh, no, love. Oh. Have you decided what you are doing? Well, I've been toying with the idea of blonde streaks. Oh, so I just keep fancying myself with blonde streaks. What do you think? Well, I don't know, love. It's up to you, really. I mean, life is all decisions, isn't it? <laughs> Would madam come through to the salon? Oh. <laughs> Listen, ladies. Come here, everybody. Now, look. What are we going to do? We've just got to make our minds up. Yes, and today. 
We can't keep Mike Baldwin hanging on forever, you know. Not a lot of choice, is there? Redundancy are closed down. Well, I wonder if he'd accept voluntary redundancy instead of lasting first out. Oh, they'd still get redundancy pay, wouldn't they? No, love, you've got to be here two years. Right, lasses. Any volunteers for Knacker's Yard or redundancy? Speak now or forever hold your peace. By heck, you can hear a bingo ticket drop. It's like I said, Hobson's choice, isn't it? Nobody's going to vote for a close down. It'll have to be redundancies. At least some will keep their jobs. Well, me and Harvey will vote for a shutdown, won't we? We could start a gambling school at Labour Exchange with Jack and Burke. <laughs> Vera Duckworth, you get up my wick sometimes, you do. You treat everything like a joke. Well, this isn't. Not for a lot of folk. Can't speak to her lately. But she's right, though. I'm so sorry to keep Modern waiting. <coughs> Still, we won't be interrupted again. I'll shut the shop. Shut the shop? Yeah. Sure, I fancy a cup of tea. Do you fancy a cup of tea? Shops are all right, apart from the customers. <laughs> Still, it's not as if it were Marks and Spencers, is it? Do you know how much I've taken this morning? Two pounds thirty. Oh. You know, I sometimes wonder how some shops manage to expand like they do. I was reading an article once, it was the Reader's Digest, I think, or, or it could have been TV Times, I've forgotten now which. Anyway, I was amazed. Did you know that Marks and Spencers first started off with a stall on Wigan Market? <laughs> I mean, you can't visualise it, can you? Perhaps they weren't doing hairdressing in the back here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I envy you, Audrey. Do you know that's ever so funny? Because I sometimes envy you. I mean, well, you're so settled, aren't you? Well, in a way, yes. But, well, is that a good thing, you see? I doubt it sometimes. Oh, Mavis, you stay as you are. Do you know, if someone were to auction off all the world's problems, we'd all go and buy our own back again. That's a very philosophical thought, is that, Audrey? And very true. I read it on the matchbox once. <laughs> oh. Hmm? Hello. Your man said I'd find you over here. Can't stop, though. We're having a meeting, you know. Could do without a scargill over there, so I'm bored with now. Anyway, get that in your pocket, kid. Fuck coppers see. What is it? Well, girls that have voted your hero at month. What are you all about? It's my hero every month, aren't you, Brian? Oh. Me and Jack used to be like you two, you know. That don't let it put you off. No, the thing is, kid, we thought you might be needing a solicitor. So we had a whip round, it's only 28 quid. And then I that from Baldwin. Still, it's better than a kick-up pants, isn't it? Hey, Fleming, mad you lot. Thanks a million, Vera. Hey, can I get you a drink? No, thanks. Well, I'll have to get back to this meeting. Well, it won't be a show without punch, would it, kid? <laughs> hey, listen, tell all the girls over here thanks a lot, eh? Yeah, and yeah. thanks for I me, will. too. I will, love. See ya. Yeah. Hey, this is a good love. No, somewhere you just drop in for a chat. Oh, is it? Do you know, I thought, seeing you stood there, they look waxworks. Lady Diana's in there now, you know. Wind your neck in, Vera. <laughs> uh, come in, order, it's a shop. <laughs> Hello, love. Oh, yeah. Hello. Shop shut again. We're not all on a day-long lunch, are you know, Albert? I think I'll have a whiskey and dry for a change. Oh, I say, I like your hair, but doesn't her hair look lovely? Oh, I know. You've done a good job, kid. In fact, I've been recommending Madame Audrey's short and curly hairdressing salon to all my mates in Paris. I was told you recommend our elder. Them curlers. My back's covered in scratches. Stan, are you telling us you don't wear pyjamas? Listen, you... them colours go through armour plating. Never mind pyjamas. So you are modern. As Vidal Sassoon is always saying, the engine won't run without a drop of oil, will it? Her engine's seized up. I ain't gonna loaf when you want one. Well, I'll put your name on my bread list if you ask me very, very nicely, Albert. Oh. You know, Freddie, your hair needs cutting badly. He always has it cut badly, don't you, Freddie, what there is of it. You know, you want to have a word with Audrey. She knows how to avoid falling hair. Oh, that right? Mm, jump out at way quick. Oh, take a run in, John Lynch. Uh, Freddie, w would you like me to cut it for you? You know, trim it up a bit at the back. No chance. Well, please yourself. Oh, no offence, love. It's just that, well, I'd rather have it done by a fella, you know. All right. I've got to be going anyway. I have some shopping to do. do you know, I don't even know what we're having for our tea yet. <laughs> OK, love. See you later yeah, when bye. we knock off. Bye. Ta-da. <laughs> uh, fancy another one in there, love? Ooh. Yeah, of course you do. Audrey, have you, uh, have you ever thought of uh, cutting fellas hair, you know? Well, I've never tried, have you? But I can't see it's any different to doing ladies, you know. There'd be what? a search fee, though, in your case, Fred. Look, how about... Uh, 
How about doing mine this afternoon, you know, when, uh, when we finish, like? Oh, why not? I'm game for anything. Uh, about half past three, OK? Half three, that's all you're on. I'll see you. OK. That's scraping the bottom of the barrel, Audrey, even for us. <coughs> Three-day week? Yes, at least everybody would be in the same boat then. Exactly, yeah. it's fair this way. Well, I can't see Mr Baldwin standing for it. He's only given us two choices, hasn't he? So I give him one. We've nothing to lose, Ivy. Only as jobs, if he turns us down. Oh, oh. we'll go and tell him that all we're going to accept is a three-day week. Yeah. And yeah. if he turns us down, well... We'll organise a sitting. Yeah. Sure. yeah. It's about time we got a bit tough for you. Of yeah. course it is. It's her. She wants redundancies. She knows they'll keep her on. It's blow you, Jack. I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. Don't miss a so, flaming yeah. daft, Vera. Look, he's give us two alternatives, right? Either close down altogether or thirty percent redundancies. You lot go back and ask for a three-day week. He's just going to think you're playing for time. Oh. Oh, he is in a bad way, believe oh. me. It's not pedology. I've seen the order books. Listen now. Hey, I'll tell you what. If he closes down altogether, I'm out on my hero. Don't talk so flaming daft, Vera. Now, look, Ivy, I didn't come over here on a banana boat, you know. He wants redundancies. Do you think he'll take this lot back once work picks up? <laughs> Will he, Acres, lad? It'll be us, love. Us here, working twice as hard for the same money. Yeah. Well, I say we vote for a three-day week. Yeah. All them in favour, put your yeah. hands up. Yeah. Hang on, Mr Braddock. I'm an elected shop steward here. Well, get shop steward in, then. we we'll stand there much longer, we'll set road. Well, I will. It'll be a shut up for a minute. Right. It's been proposed that we go to Baldwin and we demand a three-day a week. Demand, Ida? Yeah. Well, suggest, then. Yeah. And if he refuses, well, we'll organise a sitting. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Yes. Can I have a show of hands, please? Yeah. Yeah. Carried unanimously. Yeah. I still say Baldwin won't like it. Well, he'll have to lump it, won't he? Ah, uh, it's got to be summit in the electrics. Have you tested the carburetor? Is the petrol getting through? What about the pipes? I'm not a flaming dummy. Hey, hang about, mate. Don't take it out on me if your missus turns it back on you. What an idiot. I'm only trying to help. Put yourself down for a service, will you, moody beggar? I'm sorry, Ging. But I I've got up to it, haven't I? Yeah, you'll survive. Hey, what time's Baldwin coming to pick this up? Runs at some time this afternoon. Oh, hey, up. It's the incredible Hulk himself. Oi! Who's he perking? Have we got to have that flaming wireless on so loud? It's like working in a bloody disco here. Oh, sorry, boss. It's just you don't notice it saying when you're revving engines. Revving engines? It don't sound much like Grand's actual my office. It's more like a chapel arrest. He's a great lad, buggy, and I'm trying to do me back returns that wireless are driving me up the wall. When I had a wireless, it had a little knob on it marked volume. You're the muscle man, aren't you? Just turn that knob anti-clockwise, it'll lower the volume. That's why it's marked volume. You think of everything these Japs, you know. What's up with smiling more? Nothing. Well, why have you got a face as long as a gas man's mic? Are you surprised? You had no right to call me a burke over that robbery. Well, what would you call a bloke who leaves an office full of cash just to chat a bird up? I'd have been a bigger burke if I'd have left him to it. True, you would. Look, for all I know, that bloke could have been armed. And all I was thinking about was your money, your bloody takings. Well, I wish I'd have left him to it now. It's right what people say these days, isn't it? Don't get involved. Well, it could have been me in hospital now, or even a flaming morgue. Look, Ron, I've never been in trouble at all in my life, especially not with the police. And now look at me. Now look at me. You're right. I am a burke. I'm the biggest bloody burke in the country. That's just what I said, isn't it? Hey, you're lucky he didn't fire you, mate. Wouldn't surprise me if he did. <laughs> Parlour, said the spider to the fly. Well, uh, we'll be all right, will we? All right. Well, you know, no disturbances, like. <laughs> I've only cut in your hair, friend. Come on, take oh. your jacket off and sit in that chair there. <coughs> right. How much do you usually pay for haircuts? Hey, oh well, uh, well, I mean, it all depends, you know, whether it's uh, whether it's posh or not. A pound's all right. Quid, yeah, yeah, pounds okay, love. With a pot of tea thrown in. Oh, all right. 
I'll see if I can find an old tea bag somewhere. <laughs> Make a good job of this, Audrey, and uh, could be regular, you know. It's dead handy for me, this. Well, Alf mine, I think so. Oh, don't bother about Alf, he's a pal of mine. I'll sort him out. I, I say, Audrey, you, uh, you have done this before, have you? Done what? Cut fellas' hair, what do you think I made, <laughs> cheeky? <laughs> well, I've caused a few to go bald in my time. Bald? Oh, bald. Well, that's, uh, that's a sign of extra sex hormones, you know. Well, I wouldn't know that, would I? What, uh, a woman of the world like you? If it is true that baldness makes people more sexy... Hey, if it's true, all right, it's been proved. Then why don't you look round for a bald-headed woman? I'll tell you what, Eunice will go bald if she sees me in here with you cutting my hair. <laughs> scared of her, are you? Scared? No, I'm not scared. I'm scared of nobody, me. What, uh, what style do you think, uh, you know, I favour, Audrey? Well, I think an afro's out, isn't it? Mm. So, I mean, apart from Kojak, I've no idea. Actually, I really am much better at shampoos and sets. I mean, I weren't kidding when I said I'd never cut a fella's hair before, you know. Mm. To tell you the real truth, I'm a nervous wreck. Ooh. Oh, you've got a touch like a surgeon, I know that. Get off. <laughs> you know, if work breaks took as long as tea breaks, I'd be a millionaire, not on the verge of bankruptcy. Hang on, hang on, don't go. Gather round. Everybody round here. Now, I've given you long enough to make up your mind and I want to know the verdict. And don't say you want more time to consider because you've strung me along for long enough now, Ida. Well, after a very thoughtful and frank discussion with our men... Yeah, well, never mind the platitudes. Just give it to me in words of one syllable. Do I close the place down or have you got the list of people you want me to make redundant? Now, cough it up. Mr Bowen, the girls have... If you don't mind, Bobby. Ivy, I want the official union source from Ida. Well, in simple terms, we don't want redundancy. No, no, no. no, no but no. we don't want to close down either. No, 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 no way. And it's taken you all this time to come up with that little speech. I don't understand you lot. What do you think I was talking, Gaelic, when I gave you the alternatives? Right, well, thanks very much. It's been nice knowing you. Oh, yeah. hey, just a minute. Either I've told you what we've decided yet. You have decided that you want this place closed down. That's what you've decided, Vera. Actually, we've decided we'd like to go in a three-day week. Yeah, that's what we've decided. You what? Well, I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. You're, you're pulling my leg. You're pulling my leg, aren't you? It's a joke, well, isn't can't it? You, can't you at least give it a try, Mr Baldwin? No way, oh, Vera. Oh, yes, Gloria. Well, I know I've not been here very long, but I really like the job. What, the holiday camp atmosphere? Is that what you mean? Oh, it's so cold. It's no like. Did you say something? I just said to Ida, it's cold. Uh. I think you misjudge us sometimes. We want yeah. this firm to keep going, and we really think it could work. <laughs> no, no way, Gloria. Well, why? Yeah. Well, why? Well, businessmen are supposed to be gamblers, aren't they? Yeah, well, uh, and gluttons for work, and generous to a fault. Then why don't you gamble on us? Yeah. Yes. Why don't you, us? <laughs> you know, I underestimate you girls. I'm supposed to be the wise guy around here, and here are you out conning me. Come yes, on. I am a gambler, but I only back on certs. My father always said, start backing on losers and you are finished. Well, Have you ever seen a bookie? Have it? you ever seen a bookie with bicycle clips? So I only back on I only back on winners. Oh, is that a yes or a no, Mr. Baldwin? Well, I tell you what, and I must be start raving bunkers. I'll give it a whirl for you. <laughs> yeah, I must be balmy, completely balmy. <laughs> Lovely touch. So you keep saying. You know I'm not making a bad job of this. Oh, blast. The shop. Don't be long. Hello. What can I do for you? Oh, I don't really know. I've run out of ideas for Freddy's tea. Ah, well, there's always fish and chips. We had that last night. Anyway, I'm trying to wean him off chips. He's putting on too much weight. Yes, he is a big chap, though, isn't he? I mean, he should be having things like T-bone steaks, mixed grills, all that sort of thing. He gets it. <laughs> I've got some nice pizzas in the freezer. No, he won't eat foreign food, especially frozen foreign food. I know, I've got a bit of ham. Perhaps I could give him that. Have you got any tomatoes? Only the best. Uh, they're 35p, though. Oh, go on. He's worth it. If you're out there much longer, my hair will have grown again. Freddy. Do you know, I think it is. What? What? <sighs> what the heck? Come on, 
Can I have a top up, darling? Just one sugar this time. <laughs> darling? Oh, bloody Nora. No, it's bloody Eunice. What's all this then? Well, uh, well, you did say I needed a haircut. Get that stupid towel off and get out. Well, she's not finished yet. Oh, yes, she has. I said get out! It's time you grow up, Grandma. Join the Derby and Joan Club if you want a fella of your own. Don't borrow mine. I said out, out, out. Can I get my jacket? Right. Here. He can't put it on himself. I'm sorry. Ta-da. Ta-da, love you. Perhaps Eunice will finish it off for you. Oh, oh yeah. Well, he did say I needed an air cushion. Shut up! I said shut up! <laughs> Settle it then, kid. Yeah, I'm just checking it. Look, Ron, uh, I'm sorry I blew my top earlier on. Start it up. Ah, oh, that sounds OK. Look, I was all uptight, like. I had noticed. Well, I'm worried, aren't I? I mean, I might go to jail. What, you run? Car ready? What else? Oh, good. Got a bill, then I'll uh, pay you now. May not have any bread next week. <laughs> Go and get Mike's bill, will you, sunshine? It's all right. Mm. I reckon you're having a bit of bother down at your place, then. Ah, nothing I can't handle. No, is it serious? We pull through. The girls are going on a three-day week. <laughs> what? Three days? <laughs> what, no comebacks? Well, that's usually an excuse for a strike, isn't it? A bit of gyro bashing. Not if it's their idea, it's not. Who's going to volunteer to lose two days' pay? Well, it's psychology, isn't it? Listen, what would a rat do if it was cornered and there was no possible chance of escape? Well, it'll go for you, won't it? Right, exactly. Just like us human beings. That's why I left an avenue open, an escape route. You see, I went to them and I told them I wanted 30% redundancies or I'd close the place down entirely, right? Yeah, follow you. Well, I knew they wouldn't swallow that. If I'd have mentioned a three-day week, well, they'd have chucked that out as well, wouldn't they? So I didn't say anything about it. Then they come back saying it's a brilliant idea and it's the only possible way out. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Edwards, eat your heart out. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, boy. Everything OK? Yeah. Now, he's really in trouble. Ah, oh, he seems to think so. Well, he's right. Just been out marrying Fred there, cut off. Oh, yeah. Touch of the teasy wheezes there, I'd say. I wouldn't care, but he hasn't even paid me for it yet. Ask him for it. Go on, I dare you. Shut up. Uh, Fred. Fre Excuse me, Luffy, but uh, you haven't paid me for cutting your hair. How much is it? A pound. That's right, isn't it, Fred? Quid, yeah, yeah. yeah quid. Seems a bit steep to me. I mean, after all, you're only an amateur, aren't you? Thank you ever so much, Eunice. Hello. See you later. Hey, love. Who put this on top of the wardrobe? I've been looking all over for it. Probably Nicky. Funny. Hey, I'm sorry, Dad. I've got to borrow it. You know, that's all right. That's how most people collect the tools, you know. <laughs> I'll go. No, well, he's not a thing in here, Hello, Ivy. Yeah. It's Bert still here. Yeah, come in. I thought you'd have been on your way back home now. Oh, don't worry. I'm on my way. Hey, look at her face. <laughs> Stop nagging, woman. I'll finish them shelves for you before I go to bed tonight. You don't nag, do you, Ivy? Doesn't nag. She'd nag a glass eye to sleep. Bert. What's up, love? We're going on three days, love. You've got to be... I don't believe it. You what? I mean, first me, then Brian, now this. I mean, what else can go wrong? Blimey, Charlie. Somebody up there's got it in for his tildleys, I'll tell you that. Oh, come on, don't say things like that. Oh. We're going to need to do some praying before this year's out. Where's our guardian angel? I mean, he's on flame in short time and all. Oh, Brian, don't say things like that either. Don't blaspheme. What have we done to deserve it? I mean, what have we done to deserve it? That's what I want to know. I don't know. You try and live a decent life and all that happens is you just get dropped on from a great height. You go, Brian. No. You. you better come in. Come on a bad night, have I? Is there a wake on? 
Evening, all. Evening. What do you want, Mr Sykes? Mr Sykes? Only my bank manager calls me that when I'm overdrawn. Look, Ron, if you come with me cars, leave it till tomorrow, will you? We've had a right belly full, OK? As a matter of fact, lad, I've come to try and help you. You know, do me boy scout impression. Oh, a big help you've been, haven't you? Calling our Brian fit to burn after he saved your money for you. Mum. She's only telling the truth, Brian. By heck, I know how a blue bottle feels now. Look, just cool it, eh? And you and all, Mother. He's right, love. Just don't condemn the gentleman till you've heard what he's got to say, all right? Some gentleman. Hey, I don't have to help him, you know. It's not in his contract. Go on, Ron. Well, I've fixed up for you to see this solicitor. Oh, have you? And what we're supposed to pay him with? Flaming jam jars? I think I'll go out and come back in again. I'm footing the bill. Me, Ron Sykes. Watch me lips. I am footing the bill. OK. Well, what can I say, Ron? Well, try thanks. Thanks. Three-day week. Voting yourself a three-day week. You've got to be tucking short of a shilling. It were either that or redundancies. We saved you, kid. Listen, you would have been pissed out, Rory, if we were having redundancies. Your name were at the top of the list, you know. Any hey, road, three days a week will suit me. Ah, it will be two days next. Like that fellow with the horse. Wanted to cut down on feed. Got it down to a straw day. He was quitting. But then the horse went and died, didn't it? Only been off on holiday five minutes, and here she is, moaning a lot. Belly aching fit to bust, I'll bet. Yeah, well, I've got something to moan about, haven't I? Listen, I'm telling you, because we saved your job. Look, Elsie, the money might be down, but we're still working. Yeah, the money's down, all right. I'll have to say to Ralph that new three piece sweet, I'm telling you. Baldwin only give us two options either wholesale sackings or total shutdown. We've only got him to agree to this three day week bit skin of his teeth, you know. Yeah. Anyway, listen, kid, you've still got your looks, you've still got your sex appeal. <laughs> well, Ida's got kids sipping up. Ivy's got a staff job, but me and you, kid, we've got a sex appeal. So don't worry about them firing them anders. Why, heck, if you're relying on sex appeal. It'll not be just your three-piece suite that's going, baby. It'll be your carpet, your cooker and your fridge. Oh, listen, just because she hasn't got shape I've got. Shape? You must be kidding. <laughs> I've seen more shape on a pot dog. <laughs> you know, thinking about it, and the way I know him, I think Baldwin's been a bit clever. How do you make that sound, Well, if it had come straight up to you and said, right, you lot, you're on a three-day week, no arguments, you'd have gone flaming blue murder mad, wouldn't you? Hey, she's got it all so stout, you know, you know. All right, happen if we hadn't come up with this three-day week, he'd have come up with it anyhow. But the fact is, he has got stuff in that pack and he can't get shut off. Yeah, I bet he's not on a three-day week, though. You're dead right, Elsie, I'm not. It takes me 12 hours a day, seven days a week to keep you lot off the dole. And don't you forget it. How could we? The time's your reminders. Anyway, I think we should nationalise sewing. Nationalisation? It's a dead duck. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> what, with Tories and everything? No, they've nationalised unemployment, haven't they? Mm. Yeah, he arrived back last night, actually, from Scarborough. Not that you'd know, so lucrative. Still, I suppose he did go a bit towards the back end for sunbathing. He brought me a little prezi back and all, didn't he? Oh, very nice. And he says I can stay on here for all ten till Deirdre's back on her feet again. Ta. Come on, Fred. No, I'll pass things. Oh, all right, I'll tell that a few grand won't put right. <laughs> Everything all right over at the community centre? Oh, yeah, I've got it well cracked over there, Al. Yeah, well, I'm not sorry to be back, I'll tell you. I mean, holidays is all right, you know, very nice. But when you've got a business... Uh, took your woods, did you? Go to Scarborough, I always take my woods, don't I? Uh. Move myself a few bob and all. You know, got a few jackheaders in. <laughs> Mind you, as I say, I'm glad to be back. Not that I seem to have been missed much. Oh. Things are going very smoothly. <laughs> You've no complaints, have you? Complaints, mate? I've no complaints. I'll see you, Al. Right, ta-da. Toodle, Pip. Toodle, I love it. I bet he was in first thing every day for his loaf, closely followed by Fairclough. <laughs> by heck, I wish I could bottle that smile and shove it in the window. Oh, come on, you love me blushing. No, I was born in this fellow, though, you know. Yeah. I got him on a short bias and uh, played thumb bias, you know. And I told him I got this shop. And he said, well, how can you be here, leaving your shop at a time like this with trade as it is? I can leave it, I said, because I know it's in good hands. Oh, I enjoyed every minute, honestly. <laughs> yeah, well, brew up, eh, and we'll go through books. <laughs> oh, oh, you'll be snatching this pack when we've seen the books, I bet. Get away. <laughs> Morning, Bert. Morning, Alf. A large slice loaf, please. Hiya, Bert. Hello, love. You still here, then? Yeah. Well, of course she is. You know, I'd sooner sell this counter than get rid of Audrey. She's like a tonic, is that lass? She's better than all them sea breezes. Yeah, she's quite a girl, isn't she? Yeah. She was, uh, 
Telling me about your Brian's bit of bother, though. Oh, yeah, that. Well, it never rains but what it pours, does it, Alf? Mind you, we've managed to get him a solicitor. He's going round there today, so we're just keeping his fingers crossed, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right, 38, innit? That's Thanks right. Thanks very much. See you. Bye-bye. Oh, you taste sugar, don't you, love? Well, I like it very sweet, so uh, why don't you just stir it with your little finger? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, love. It's going to be a bit different from Barney Hampshire, you know? All those solicitors dealing in all that crime and that. He is on your side. I might not want to be on my side. I might not like my story. Just tell him the truth. Describe it all as it happened. Well, look, he might tell me to plead guilty. He might say I've got no chance. What is it that's on the telly? Uh, doing your bird. Never mind about doing your bird. Just get your leg in bed. <sighs> oh, not that one. It's the wrong arm. <sighs> Crikey, Brian. Calm down. You're like a cat on hot bricks. Of course I am. Flame of stomachs in knots. Well, you've not eaten all morning, have you? Oh, where's Ron? He should be here by now. So give yourself half an hour and I'll be around to pick You'll you up. He'll be here if he said. We should be thankful he's coming. What? Was there money? Is this money you were trying to pinch, wasn't it? He's trying to help Brian. Look, look, I had to get him bald, then, didn't I? Otherwise, he'd have just left me to it. He fixed all this up, you know. He's paying the bill. Look, I know it's awful for you. But everybody's on your side. See? Hi. All set then, son? Yeah. Best be motoring then. You know what these fellas are like. Time's money. He said we'd hear at 10 to already start charging at 10 to. See you later, love. Don't worry. And don't you worry. I'll fetch him back smiling. Hey, Nicky, what are we going to do? Eh? If we didn't do nosh, there wouldn't be six in here. Boozers that don't do nosh have a lunchtime. Might as well shut the doors these days. Yeah. Hey, do you remember that pub years past here in the Slough House? There was a chap there, you know, he used to play the bones. No kidding. Some of the fellas played spoon. But I mean, him naturally being a butcher. It... Oh, but butcher, you man, I'm having my dinner here. And then there was the grave diggers on. Zombies well. delight. Yeah, near the cemetery. Laugh a minute, I bet that was. Some of them chaps, you know, they only take it. They were very comical. Cool. You tell funny stories about the corpses. Hey, and I'll tell you something else as well. Come on, Happy Harry, make us have it. Well, they didn't want super hot like that then, because they had good ale. Hey, come on, Albert, the ale's not bad here, is it? I mean, look at me. I mean, I'm on the dole, I'm going to be summoned, our Brian could go to court, Ivy's on short time, three days a week. I mean, if the ale were bad in here, that'd be it. Another half of laughing gas cock? Why not? Hey, is it right that Audrey Potter's doing air outside? Well, so she tells me over our cocoa. Yeah, well, she did maps, didn't she? I just wonder if she could do one for me. I've been doing it myself. It's in a right mess, isn't it? All of them regular places, they're that expensive, aren't they? Ah, oh, well, I'll probably so soon knock that at Ed now he's come back, I can tell you. Well, she doesn't have to do it there. She can do it at Houses if she's living at Houses. Yeah, but I can't see if Alf Roberts takes her on. See Audrey working all day and doing hairdos in the evening. No, oh, just thought she might be doing me a shampoo and set on cheap. Well, it's not cheap in long run. Oh, listen to her, Mrs. It's money bags. Cheap's cheap if you're skint, isn't it? I had to ring Tease the Weeze up. I said, hey, lad, that's cancel my phone for next Friday. Yes, it's all right for you. You've got four wages coming in your house. Yeah. Old fella, Muriel, Bernard, all in good jobs. I'll tell you what, if you were the only one that were working, you wouldn't be so flaming smug, I can tell you. Smug? How do you mean? Well, when a thing's scarce, it ought to be rationed. Work ought to be rationed. Well, I've never heard such a load of rubbish in all my life. You didn't say that when they were your Bert, your Brian, and you. Working every hour, God sent. <laughs> Where's she going in such hurry? The bank? No, she'll be going round market. Do you know, rather than pay shop prices, she'll go around that flaming market looking for bargains. In a dinner hour in this weather. I hope she gets flaming corns. Uh, look, shall I speak to Audrey about your hairdo? Well, I can only afford a couple of quid, Elsa. Yeah, well, she might do it on a Saturday afternoon if she's skint. Hey, oh, he asked for me as well. Yeah, but remember what I told you. If Alf decides to keep her on, who knows? He won't keep her on, though, will he, where she's been operating? Well, he might not tumble. Listen, if he don't tumble, somebody'll have one spoon out, won't they? Somebody'll split on her, somebody'll spill beans, won't they? Take things down, are they? They are a bit, aye. I knew they'd be down. I mean, what with Deirdre only being able to do an hour here and there, it meant I had to close for lunch. Then, well, if I wanted to, uh, you know, powder my nose, well, it meant leaving the shop lest I closed up. Yeah, well, not to worry, love. 
You're open. Well, it says sort of door, doesn't it, love? Yes, it does, but I called once or twice last week and the open sign said open, but when I tried the door, in actual fact, you were closed. Oh, that sign defeats me. <laughs> well, I think it was Friday I came and the sign said closed, oh. and I thought, oh, my, no tea, no sugar, no bread. Trudged off to Mrs. Battersby's, met Mrs. Walker coming back from here with her loaf and everything, and she said, well, it may say closed, but I assure you they're open. <laughs> That reminds me of that joke, you know, about that man who got on the bus. He said to the conductor, does this bus go to town? And the conductor said, no. It's real cheeky, conductor, you know. And the fella said, well, it says town on the front. And the conductor said... Well, it says typhoon tea on the back, but we're not going to China. <laughs> so, doesn't typhoon tea come from Ceylon? Hey, do you remember them buses that used to say duplicate on the back? You know, dozens of buses also <laughs> duplicate, duplicate. You never knew what they were duplicating. <laughs> There was a fellow in a bus stop once he said to me, I don't know where duplicate is, but they've got a right good bus service. <laughs> 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 the usual brown slice, is it? Yes, uh, plus my order, and uh, if you could pop it round. Oh, aye, she's missed me popping round, you see. Oh, yeah. Well, no, one does get used to good service, but I'd hardly put it as strongly as that. <laughs> what can we do for you, Mrs. Ogden? Uh, half a middle cup, please, and make sure it is half and half. Well, the scales are there, Hilda. Oh, I know they're there, and don't worry, I'm watching them. Mm. I, um. I wondered whether it was all right just uh, coming in like. Wondered whether I might have to ring and make an appointment. Now, you have to make allowances, you know. I am entitled to a holiday, and it's very difficult getting reliable staff these days. Mm. Hey, what happened last Thursday? We only took three pound eighty-four pence. Uh, uh, half a pound, was it, Mrs Ogden? Yeah. Well, I think that's just about dead on the mark, wouldn't you say? You want to see the necklaces brought her back? Must have cost her bob or two. She thinks she's got a right sugar daddy there, you know. Mind you, that Audrey Potter always has had sort of a, a gold digging side, hasn't she? Hey, old Fred, what's up with your eyes? My eye? Well, what, what do you mean? It's gone all green. I'm not jealous, it's just I don't like to see a mate of mine, well, drop himself in it, that's all. My heart is breaking. I'll keep over, Somewhat will you? I've got enough on me plate, I don't know, you're mother, you know. Hello. Well, that's what I mean. We've got the solicitor. Brian's boss recommended him. Well, he said it was a mate of his, uh, actually. What did he say his name was? Holland. Mul Mulholland, I think he said it was. Not Roger Mulholland. Roger, that's it. Roger oh, Mulholland. Well, if it's him, you're all right, he you knows his stuff. I mean, uh, nothing flashy. He's, what, well, 40-ish? Straight as a dive at Sharp. He's our man. Now, if your Brian's got no chance here, tell him. Yeah, the problem is, Ron, you see, with a case like this, if the lad looks a bit handy, and having seen him, I would say it does look a bit handy, you know. Whereas the, the joker, he stumps a bit of a weed. Roger, this kid's as good as gold. The muscles don't mean a thing. I don't know, he, he probably had sand kicked in his face when he was a kid at Blackpool. Yeah, I'm just saying that's the problem. That's the line the prosecution will take. Licensed thug, thinks he's entitled. Put him in the box, they'll come down hard. And I've got to know how the lad's going to shape up. Well, I wouldn't say you're the toughest kid in the world. Right, well, uh, we'll have a chat. All right, son. Come on in. Come in, Brian. Sit down. Say you're on. Sit down, mate. Hope you don't mind waiting. No. Well, uh, we've said hello. We've had a chance to weigh each other up. I've uh, had a word with Ron just for the background. Now, the first thing I want to stress is that you've got yourself into a bit of real bother. And I hope you realise that. <laughs> You've come in here to tell me you're not coming in again. Well, that might come in for the odd thing. And that we'll not have it in stock. But when it comes to me orders, I'm going somewhere else. Well, there's only Sissy Battersby does orders. Well, that's just where I'm going. Well, are you sure, Albert? Because they'll not deliver, you know. I know what the Battersby will do, and I know what they won't do. This is all aimed at me, isn't it, Mr Tatlock? Aye, happen it is. Well, look, if you've got a moan, No, Albert... no, all I mean to say is that the beauty parlour might shoot some folk. But when he comes to slicing bacon, they make a mock of it. They're subtle with it, isn't they? You've never been in for bacon. You've never been in for bacon. Never been in? Well, I could get the machine. Never mind a blooming bacon. What do you mean? Well, you're in there, gassing and listening to the wireless playing. and they can't see who comes in the shop. Listen, Albert, you can't always hear when you're through there. All you had to do was shout. Well, I don't fancy coming to the shops and shouting. Yeah, well, if you feel like taking your orders to Sissy Battersby and you don't mind the walk, feel free to do so. Right, well, that's just what I'm going to. I'm going to advise other folks to do the same. Well, you'll find she's pricey. I mean, I used to shop there. There was one bob on this, two bob on the other. Mm, well, that's it, isn't it? I mean, 
If Albert's gone, I mean, if he's going somewhere else, that's the end of the road. That's bankruptcy. There's only the river left. Hey? I'm kidding, aren't I? We've oh. not lost Albert. He'll have one week of her price. He'll be back here naturally knows. <laughs> oh, hello. It's Jeff, isn't it? Now, didn't you used to go in the foundryman's? Jeff, yeah. how's your wife? So anyway, he makes for the door and I follows him. We gets outside and this girl, she's waiting for him in the car. But then he turns round again and thumps me again. So I punched him back. Once, twice. Oh, I can't remember. But anyway, I grabbed him by his jacket and I spun him round and threw him against the wall. And he's edited and he, he just went down all limp. You, uh, you done much boxing, have you, son? <laughs> yeah. I used to do a bit when I was at the youth clubs and that. Did you do, uh, bodybuilding, Charles Atlas touch? Yeah, I do a bit of weights. Burgess, a bit of a weed, was he? Well, I'd say average size, probably, um, bantam to my welter. Not exactly Mr. Universe, eh? Uh, no. No match for a lad with your build? Well, not in the ring. No, no, not in the ring, but in a situation like this, uh, with a weapon. Well, yeah. Yeah, with a weapon, a, a screwdriver that could be used like a, like a knife. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Mm. Burgess wasn't using it like that, though, was he? Well... He was using a handle, uh, like a club. Well, he got to win, you know, on the earth. Yeah, but it wasn't a spanner, it wasn't a wrench. <clears throat> Show us your fist, Brown. Show us your fist. Two taps with a screwdriver and you're in with Emmy. Bang, bang. And I bet you punch your weight, don't you, lad? Win your fights with knockouts, am I right? I've not had many fights, and I've never knocked anybody out. Oh, but that's the ambition, eh? Someone down for the count. Look, I don't box these days, and I've got no ambitions about boxing. No, but you did box, and anyone that's trained to box is trained to knock people out. I didn't knock the lad out, the wall did. Oh, the wall suddenly grew arms and hit him, did it? He was legging it. He was a thief, and he was legging it. Did you have the cash with him, Brian? Did he have the cash with him? Yeah, he did. Look. Stopping a thief a crime? No, stopping them's no crime, but laying them out, throwing your weight about, smashing their heads against walls. Look, he was legging it. I grabbed him. It was his own force I threw him against the wall. Now look, you let me have that description again, son. And this time, less of the boxing patter, if you can manage that. Because that's crucial for me. Because I'll be quite straight with you, son. It does sound, with that patter, as if you are partial to a bit of the aggro. And there's no way I can defend that. I say, Miss Lynch, there's a load of soup bowls here, what pet Lynch. So? Well, so there's no tea that I can't manage. Go on, get cracking. As they say in the brownies, Fred, get knotted. Oh, they'd never say that in the brownies. Well, what would they say in the brownies, then? Well, they might say, um, oh, let's see now. Oh, go and suck a sour lemon, or oh, go and fall off your toadstool, or how's your granny off for meat coupons? <laughs> I thought we were a team, any road. We are a team, Fred, but nobody elected you, Captain. Now, here we have a true leader. What'll it be, Colonel? A pint of bitter, please, love. And how is the first mate? Well, if you're referring to order, she's holding the fort. Oh, get them trained, I'll start as you mean to go on, lad, that's what I say. Fred's idea of teamwork. Well, teamwork's the answer. Is that what it is, you and Audrey? Teamwork? Well, the way things are, I think we can work together. Work? Is that, uh, is that all? Well, yeah, she's giving me an hour off now. I go back, she takes an hour and goes to town. It's nice to have that sort of arrangement. <laughs> you can't whack it. So, I could actually make another appointment, then. Appointment? Just have my hair done. <laughs> make as many appointments as you like, love. Oh, well, in, in that case, will you tell Audrey that I'll pop in next week? Tell Audrey? Well, Mavis, I've seen some cats let out of some bags in my time. Oh, do you mean it was a secret? Didn't you know she was doing hair? Did you not know, Alf? It was all that there last week, having your place. You know, hair dryers, curling tongues, well, all sorts. Well, blowed. Say what you like, Alf. That girl's got initiative. Well, she could do very well. Oh, she could. And you're right, Bet. She has got initiative. You'd buy drinks all round, wouldn't you, if you weren't skinned? Oh, dear. You see, that's what you get going round flaming mouth. Aye, standing there haggling, catching a death of cold. That's what you get being tight. Yeah, don't make any more either, because you spend it all on cough mixture. Well, it's all as packed out, whether or not. What are you lot chuntering about? It's these two. Plus your remarks as I go to the market. Well, what's wrong with that? I go, but I never get a chance to go. 
Well, why don't you send your bird then? Better still, why don't you get in a stall selling corset? Do you mind, do you? It's a place to get rid of stuff, I can tell you. Yeah, a fellow with a gift of the gab could sell anything there. Yeah, there used to be a fellow on there selling boxes, you know. You should set this box home, examine it in private, follow the instructions, and you'll grow four and a half inches overnight. Well, it would before I shot off, you know, I had the shape, but a bit flat-like. So I dips up me half a dollar, goes home, locks myself in outside the Oh, they're all watching Mr. Irwin? Yeah. You know that stuff that Johnson sent back? That's bigger than my thoughts, just a bit, yeah. Well, I've had an idea that we can get rid. He's got to come home first. Yeah, of course, he's got to change, hasn't he? Mind you, what with the buses? If this bloke won't take him, Ron says he knows another. Not as good, but... I like your necklace, ma'am. Oh, that's a present from Scarborough, that, isn't it, love? A little token of Alf's regard. His regard? <laughs> You've not been doing your braids nosy bit, have you? You're joking. He fancies a rotten, doesn't he? <laughs> you know, I thought there'd be ructions, what with the takings, and then me shutting shop while I was doing hairdos, and people blackguarding my name right and flipping left, but uh, everything's been sweetness and light. What, even with the hairdressing? Well, I didn't let on about that, did I? Uh, Alf came back from the pub just before I came here, actually, and seemingly Mavis has gone and let the cat out the bag. Mavis? The champion liberator of imprisoned cats? But all he said was, why not, if you want to do one or two shampoos and sets when you got an hour or two? It's ten past three now. I could do worse than Alf. You could do a lot better, you know. Oh! Oh! I was just going to say, Brian, where are you? Well... How do you get on, son? Well, it's going on on my case. He reckons he might be able to get the police to drop the charges because there was no eyewitnesses. And he said it was obvious I was defending the property from theft and defending myself from assault. But by that, love, I'll tell you what, he put me through it. <laughs> Took nothing for granted. You look worn out. Yeah, you look done in, son, don't he? I'll make some tea. The singing on. It's but... what you call the Dunkirk spirit, love. <laughs> oh, well, the Dunkirk spirit's all right with me because it's definitely backs to the wall time and I have nothing to offer but blood, sweat, toil, and tears. Oh, oh. now, where have I heard that before? <laughs> Up, dig for victory, kid. <laughs> yeah, down with a squander bug. Yeah, I'm glad to hear you're getting the message. Yes, and when you finish with jokes, don't forget that stuff from Johnson's that sent back and what it means to all of us. Four grocer jeans and jean jackets that we've got to get rid of, so I'll tell you what I've done. I have booked a stall at the market, so starting tomorrow, we will be selling our own product. Oh, well, the best of luck, cos winter draws on, you know. I'll uh, lend you a long woolly vest, if you like. Yeah, I could have lend you a pair of our Jack's long johns. Will you be giving them your cockney pattern, Mr Baldwin? <laughs> <laughs> He'll be selling Baldwin's knickers <laughs> when he can't. When he can't. <laughs> He'll be selling Baldwin's No, not me, darling. You two in pairs, kicking off with Mrs Tanner and Mrs Duckworth, as you both think it's such a lark. Oh, oh, hey. Well, as, as well as long vests and long johns, I would suggest well. Well, I've no wellies. Have you any wellies, Have Kate? I echoes like got any? I'm not selling on no flaming market. Right then, darlings, 8.30 in the morning sharp. Be a nice day out for you. Much better than Blackpool. Through all kinds of weather. He's joking. You must be. Hey, things are fresh air. We'll come and see you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dear. Oh, dear. Oh, at last. I was beginning to think I was the last man on earth. You know, the one that's supposed to turn the lights out. Well, I'm not late. I'm early. It's ten minutes to looking on time. Yeah, but where's Elsie and Vera? I mean, they know they're working the market today, don't they? Well, not about Elsie, but Vera will come down the street when I come in. Oh, that's flaming typical. And they also know that if we're late, we lose the market stall, don't they? I don't suppose they're all that keen to be stood out at teaming rain all day. It's not going to rain all day. I heard the forecast. It said brighter later. Is it? Yes, it is. I'll tell you what, it's wicked out there. Oh, yeah, but it won't last. It's going to be sunny spills, they say. Ah, well, it wants to be. Vera, Elsbelt, you're not really dressed for standing out market, are you? No, it's going to be cold out there. You want your legs legged? No fear. Listen, some folk pick their undies in case they get knocked down by a bus. I pick mine in case they get knocked down by John Travolta. Well, I know for a fact he never does his shopping on Weatherfield Market, love. Well, let them that wants to do the self. But I'm not standing there looking like a sack of potatoes. Oh. I'm not. I mean, look, look what I mean. 
If you want to be warm, not glamorous, I mean, at least Elsie is dressed sensibly. Thank you very much, Harvey. You've made my day. Well, you took your time getting here, didn't you? Well, you know what I think about this market lock. I think bigger that for a game of soldiers. Then you should have thought that before you volunteered. I never volunteered. I was sitting there quietly minding my own business and I got picked on. All right, all right. Well, let, let, let's not start the day with a lot of moaning, eh? Hey, well, I'm not moaning. I think we'll have a bit of fun, kid. Oh, good. Now, you keep that in mind because if you can get a bit of fun out of it, it's a bonus because we are doing this selling on the market for real. And don't forget, it's your jobs as well as the girls that are at stake, you know. Yeah, we've heard it all before, Winston. Blood, sweat, toil and tears. <laughs> Especially the toil and sweat. I like that bit, yeah. Right, come on in. The van's loaded. Let's get on with it, shall we? Oh, it's yeah. going to be lovely. Good luck. Go oh, on. You'll need it, I reckon. Oh, oh, Jack. oh I'm sorry I'm late. I couldn't get in the bathroom. I'll see have to go out early. They're doing them at market store, you know. Anyway, I mean, what can you do? It is her house, thank you. Not so good, love. There's no been happening anyway. Oh, but I don't like being late, you know. No, you're all right, love. You do plenty when you are here. <laughs> is that your breakfast? Just a piece of toast? Come on, that's not enough for a well-made chap like you. Shall I go and cut you something? No, you're all right, love. Hey, we'll have a bacon but butty later on, shall we? Just you say the word, you're the boss. Yeah, there's a couple of orders here, love, if you all like right. to do them. Uh, no rush, they're not needed till this afternoon, yeah. like. Oh, and cake mix. Yeah. Mrs. Eden wanted some last night, and could I find it? And I know there was a delivery recently. Oh, well, I, I shifted the cake mix while you were away. Yeah, I'll put it here. Oh, no wonder I couldn't find it. Well, I thought it would be better, you know. Shall I shift it back again? No, you're all right, love, just as long as I know where it is. Oh, well, you're the boss. Uh, are you still doing it? Pardon? I'm talking to Audrey, I'm not talking to you. I wondered if you could do me a wash and set, love. Oh, well, you have to ask Mr. Roberts, love, <laughs> Well, I don't want him doing yet. No. <laughs> no, what I mean is, it is up to him, it is sharp. Well, no, like I said, love, I, I don't mind as long as you don't interfere with business. I mean, if you want to do hairdressing when you're finished... Oh, we were thinking about tonight, I was thinking about this dinner. Oh, well, if you want to spend your dinner time doing hairdressing. Oh, all right, love, yes, well, I'll fit you in. Oh, as long as it's all right with Mr Roberts, I mean, he is the boss. Oh, I can say that. I've told them. All right, love, Ta-da. Ta Ta I'll put the kettle on, shall I? <laughs> Okay, Nicky, let's have a look, eh? Capricorn. Here we are. Hey, love. There's no point reading a forecast for him. Nothing happens to him except eating and sleeping. Affairs of those closest to you are highlighted today. The sun shines on those you love. Ah, what a load of twaddle. That must mean you. That must mean that solicitor's going to get things sorted out for you. You hope. You know something? I think you only read those horoscopes to find something that will cheer you up. Oh, why not? Anyway, maybe that sister is going to get things sorted out. Aye, right. I believe it when it happens. Well, if I best be off. You're due on the pumps tonight, aren't you? Yeah, worse luck. I wish you'd chuck it in, Brian. No, love, you know we need the money. I know. But you work hard enough at the garage during the day, and I've been thinking, maybe I can get a part-time job now, eh? No. I hate you going to that service station, Brian. I keep thinking, supposing someone else tries to rob Love, the place. Love, they say lightning never strikes twice in the same place. Yeah, I know. Well, I don't believe it. I can't help worrying, Brian. It's happened once, it can happen again. No, this town will be different. How do you mean? You're not catching me tackling with anybody. I'll tell you. The two old kid came in that <laughs> garage and stuck his hand in the till. I'd say, hey, go on, son, help yourself. I've been a mug once, love, and that's plenty. Don't be bitter, Brian. I can't help it. Hey, Elsa, there's a good bit of talent about. Have you spotted him off box stall? Now, listen, you two, you're here working to sell the jeans, right? And I want results. That means you stay on the job all the time. Hey, well, we have to have a dinner, don't we? All right. Well, one of your nips out, buys a sandwich or some chips and spends five minutes doing it, no longer. Blimey. It's going to be a long day, kid. A lot longer than it is in the sewing room, I can tell you. Well, you're on commission, aren't you? Hey, on top of your normal wages, 5%. So that means that the more you sell, the more you get. Yeah. Well, we can but try. All right, then, see you. What? Well, you're not going already, are you? We've only just arrived. Well, I'll pop back later, see how you're getting on. Hot oh. time. Well, it's not that I don't trust you, but uh, let's make it a surprise, eh? Oh, ain't that just plain oh, whiskey? Like Where do you put them things, kid? Here. Here. Like let's get the card up. Do you call that laying out? You'd do better with the cups. <laughs> I'm only doing my best, kid. Nice. Hey, how much is 5% in money? Uh, 5% of 8.99. Oh, about 45p. Hey, that's not bad, is it? On top of us basic pay. Uh, how about a pair of jeans, love? I've just got right size for you. You are? You cheeky monkey. <laughs>
No, quite honestly, Charlie, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised they ever decided to go ahead with the prosecution in the first place. I bet it wasn't your decision. No, that's what I thought. Ah, come on, Charlie, don't give us all that stuff about justice being seen to be done, even as a joke. No, my bet is that someone in the chief constable's office, and you know who I mean, he wants to present himself as Mr. Whiter than White on this one. Yeah, well... Yeah, thanks, Charlie. Well, uh, well no comment will do very nicely. No, 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 I won't quote you. The point is, this, uh, this, uh, Brian Tilsley, now, as you'll have seen, he's got a completely clean record. I mean, he's just an, he's just an ordinary lad. Quite honestly, I just don't think you've got any chance of a, a conviction on this one. No, I don't always say that, and you know it. Look, all right, all right, Charlie, put it this way. Now, if we go all the way on this one, and that's what we intend to do, it's going to cost a lot of money. And if you end up with egg all over your face, as I think you will, someone's going to start sending off rockets. Come in. No. Yeah. Of course I know what he's like. All I'm saying is just put it to him and try and get him to see reason. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Charlie. All right. Yeah. Yes. Oh, uh, how's, uh, how's Yvonne, by the way? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, well, uh, she would, wouldn't she? Yeah. So, oh, yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, right. Uh, but next week sometime. I oh, know, yeah. See you, Charlie. Hello, on. Uh, sorry about that. What about young Brian you were discussing? Yes, uh, that's uh, Charlie Rogers. I was just having a word with him. He's, uh, he's prosecuting. You've, uh, you've met him, haven't you? At the uh, fall ball last year, wasn't it? No, I can't put a face to that now. No, well, never mind. Anyway, he's very straight. I mean, between you and me, if it was up to him, I don't think your ladder would have been charged in the first place. No, uh, my bet is that someone in the chief constable's office is trying to do his image a bit of good on this one. What do you mean? Ah, well, you know, the, uh, the politics of compassion, bending over backwards to prove that he doesn't approve of all and sundry smashing up villains. You know, even villains have rights, all that kind of... Uh, Makes you laugh, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, uh, according to Charlie, most of the bobbies are all in favour of giving your lad a medal. Anyway, I've, uh, I still hope that we might be able to get them to drop it. <coughs> Good. Darling, what about my planning application? Look, don't get on to me about sexual equality. All right, I won't. I suffer from it more than you, well, more than any women. How do you make that out? Well, let's face it. It should be men that should be fighting for sexual equality, not women. It's social equality we want, Fred. There's nothing you can do about men being more stupid. All right, then. What about the old age pension, eh? Will you stop using dirty words, please, like old and age? Give over. I'm being serious. Why do I have to wait until I'm 65 to get the pension, eh? It's because I'm a fella. You'll get yours when you're 60, don't you? Mind you, in your case. I don't think you've got to wait long. Any more cracks like that, Frogface? You won't live to collect yours. Yes, ladies. Uh, two shandies, please. Are we having anything to eat? Oh, yes, I think. Just perhaps some pie. Oh. Right, two pies, then, please. Listen, ladies, just answer me this. How come women keep mithering on about sexual equality, yet men have to wait five years longer to get the pensions? I don't know, I'm sure. Now, I don't make these rules. Well, I agree. It doesn't seem very fair on the face of it. You wouldn't chuckle it's not fair. I mean, look, how would you feel if it were the other way around? Yeah, if you got your pensions, you know, when you were 65 and men got theirs when they were 60. You'd be, you'd be chaining yourself to railings and throwing bombs down gents' toilets. You'd be going on something fantastic, you lot. I think Fred's feeling his age today. No. Hey, give us a light tail to take out. Uh, <clears throat> look, I'll say in there. You're an intelligent woman. What are you after? Oh, when a fella says you're intelligent, it means he thinks you're stupid and he's after something. You sound cynical, Mrs. Elton. No, I'm not cynical, Chuck. Just married that fellow. Listen, Elder, don't you think women and men should get the pension at the same time? I mean, why should your Stanley have to wait five years longer than you, you know, working five years longer? Our Stan? He's not done five years work in the whole of his life. I do more in a week than he does in a 12 month. Oh, you're prejudiced. Albert will back me up. What do you think, Albert? What do I think about what? Well, what I'm saying about, you know, women getting the pension at 60 and men have to wait until they're 65. Well, I know that. Well, I'm just saying that I, I think they should get it, you know, both when they're 60, like. Well, in my opinion, no. Well said, Albert. No, why not? Well, I had to wait till I was 65 to get mine. Now, why should you get yours sooner than what I did? Oh, blind. You'll never get men's lib off the ground, Fred. You blokes are too busy stabbing each other in the back. Oh, tattlock doesn't stab you in the back. He stabs you in the front, doesn't he? 
Vera's gone off to that market like she's dressed for flaming picnics. She won't be told you. Oh, hey. Hey, up, Brian, I thought I'd catch you in here. It's wrong one. Is there something a matter with the, the guy? No, no, you'd only just left and Roger's secretary phoned up asking for you. Oh, yeah? What, have there been some developments then? No, it's just that he wants Brian to go round as soon as he can this afternoon, so I thought I'd better nip round and make sure you get a message, quick. Yeah, I wonder what he wants. Did the secretary say anything? Yeah. No, but I'll be with him this morning. None about this is doing a planning job for me, like. And, uh, well, he's hopeful. Between me and you, he, he reckons he can get coppers to drop everything. Oh, God, I hope so. Hey, Ron, you'll have a drink with us, will you? Ah, cheers, Bert. I'll try a pint of mild. It's on its way, mate. Don't look so worried, Brian. Can't help it. Found to a pinch of snuff, he's got some good news for you. Do you think so, Ron? Ah, he's a good lad, Roger Mulholland. He's in with everybody. Coppers, council, he's red up. He's got some rape villains off in his time. Our Brian's not a villain. Mother. I'm sorry, love. Look, our Brian's done no wrong. I'm not having lumped in with riffraff and criminals. Oh, this is hopeless, kid. It might as well pack up and go home. Well, it, it was Mighty Mouse that put us on this store, weren't it? Well, I don't suppose he used to know, was he? Oh, my God, I don't. Hey, up, look. I have very much notice, Watson. Thank Our you. best pair on store there. Mm, Mind you, good. they're all good. You tell your friends. Jimmy's jeans, cheapest and best. Beware of imitations. Note the price, Luke. Note the price. If you're still not satisfied, come round the back of the store with me. Ten minutes. Who's going to buy our gear when they see his prices? Do you think we should drop ours to compete with us? Vera, there's no answer to that. <laughs> I'll do. Give us a pack of my little cigars, will you? Here, they tell me you've got Elsie Tanner standing film Weatherfield Market. Yeah, that's right. Couldn't credit it at first. You know, it sound like you. That's right, though. I've got Vera Duck with as well. Bit of a come down, isn't it? You know, change of image and all that. From big tycoon to Market Street holder. I was too proud to make money. Anyway, I'm still a tycoon, yeah. whatever that means. <laughs> but one market stall. I mean, it wouldn't seem bothering with. Oh, no, hang on a minute. You just think about it. I mean, if I can unload, say, what, a uh, grocer jeans a week on that store, right? Yeah. At nine quid a piece. Now, you're talking about, what, 1,300 quid turnover. Over, right? Now, that's a far sight more than I get from any chain store, I'm telling you. So you're not talking about just petty cash, are you? I reckon I've opened a whole new world, a new empire. I might even buy bigger cigars, or lots more of these little ones. Oh, good. <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. Oh, Mr. Baldwin. Yeah, what are you doing here at quarter two? You should have been back at work at half past one. Well, I've been having my hair done, and it's a... A bit longer than I thought. Yeah, a little bit longer of my time. I'm paying for it. Now, come on, get on with well, it. Well, we can call it part of my shopping hour. Shopping hour? You're working a three-day week. Can you expect a shopping hour on one of your working days? You've got to be joking. Yeah, you're not bothering Mike, eh, hey, with all this big market deal. What's up with him? You what? He stands here telling me how well he's doing, selling all these blooming jeans around the markets, and he's bothered about ten minutes of one of his girls' time. If you ask me, he's very near the edge, that fella. He could fall tomorrow for all his big talk. That'll be 47 and a half for you, all right. Pushing you back. Hey, listen, kid, do you fancy another hot pie? It's not half an hour since you've had one. I know, but it gives you something to do, doesn't it? It's just an excuse for you to pass that pot stall, isn't it? <laughs> You've got to admit, though, it, it's got a lovely pie dish. Pardon? Away up. Lone Ranger's back. Oh, look at his face. Ah, he'll laugh the other side of it in a minute, I'll tell you. Right, girls. That's right. It's gone. Over to him. Golden Bennett. You'd only been gone ten minutes when Gunga Din arrives. I'll tell you what, we were dropped on, weren't we? Mm. Yeah, but you must have sold a few pairs. Oh, how the heck can we? He's selling 30 but ch cheaper than we are. We might as well pack up and go home. Neil Desperandum, girls. Neil Desperandum. What does Neil Desperandum mean? Latin for don't get your knickers in a twist. Good afternoon. 34 ways, medium leg, right, Colonel? I got just the thing for you. Look at those. Top quality. Made for Cliff Richard, these, right? For you, 750. I'm not buying, mate. I'm selling them. It's my stool over there. Oh, you're the one, are you? You don't come from around here, do you? No, London. Thought so. You've got a cheek, you have, coming up here, pinching business. You want to stick to your own stamping grounds. No, I don't want any argy bargy. I mean, I didn't know I was going to get the stool next to you, do I? I mean, it's bad news to me, business-wise. <laughs> That's your worry. Yeah, but it'll soon be yours. Because I ain't going back over to my stool. And I'm going to alter all my prices. And the price I had in mind was four ninety-nine. You see, I manufacture this stuff. I couldn't sell it at a lower price than you and still make a profit. 
I, I wouldn't say it, mate. Mind you, we could always do a deal. Um, oh, come in, Brian. Sit down. Thanks. Well, uh, things have happened, so I wanted to have a word with you as soon as possible. Yeah, Ron, uh, Mr. Sykes said. Mm. Well, first things first, you'd be glad to hear that you don't have to go to court to give evidence against Ronald Burgess. I heard this morning he's pleading guilty to the robbery charge. Oh, that's good. Mm. Hey, that is good, isn't it? Well, it saves everyone a lot of trouble, and uh, quite honestly, didn't have much option. I mean, there was no way to get away with it, so it's just doing a sensible thing. Well, does that mean I'm in the clear, then? No, I'm afraid not. Well, I mean, if he's pleading guilty to the robbery charge... Yeah, well, I'm afraid it still doesn't cancel out the wounding charge against you. I had hoped to persuade them to drop it, but, um... Well, yeah, you said. Yes, well, uh, they won't, I'm sorry to say. They're pressing on, so we'll have to go to court. Oh, blimey. Well, um, I'm not downhearted, and there's no need for you to be at this stage. Oh, God. No, quite honestly, I think we've got a very good chance. Very good chance, indeed. Well, it's quite a row I've ever heard. I were hoping for a fun shop. Well, I thought it might warm things up a bit. I mean, what's the good of having a prize for? Especially when you can't win. I mean, what's the good of cutting your own throat? When you can get a friend to do it for you, Chief. Exactly. So, you want a gentleman's agreement? All right, sir. A nice little price level, eh? And I'll tell you what, I'll get the girls going, get a bit of noise, and I'll tell you something else. I don't know where you're getting this stuff from, but I could put it into you a few bob cheaper. Talk to me in the pub, after business hours. All oh, right. Are we going home? Home? No, we're not. We're going to get rid of some of this. Oh. Come on in, ladies. Do yourself a favour. Hello, my little love, and you are lovely, aren't you? I tell you what, you get yourself in a pair of these jeans, you'll look even lovelier. You won't look back. You can't, because you gusset a go. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, you get your legs in one of these, and you will be like a million dollars, and all for what? $8.99. I can't be fairer than that, can I? Hey, eh? cheap, and none of this for a muck, you know, made in England. Five miles from where we stand, I'll tell you what. Lady Diane wears these jeans. In fact, she had a pair of these jeans on when she got married under her wedding dress. Ah. And if you don't believe me, ask those ladies over there, because they were there, right? Now, come on, darling, what about you? Uh, three pound of potatoes and a tin of peas. Oh, right. Peas. Three potatoes. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, hello. They all said it looked a treat. Here, do you mind not pushing in? I'm not doing any shopping, Hilda. I just want a quick word with you, Audrey. The girls like your hair, did they? Yeah. Oh. Man running packing, what's not if you'll do worse? Mind you, you could do worse, couldn't you, Hilda? I don't know what you're on about. Audrey, doing hairdressing. No, Marilyn wants to know if tomorrow dinner's all right, Joe. Yeah, that's fine. Well, I'll tell her. Tell her, Robert. Tell her. Oh, I'll bet Alf Roberts will have something to say. Oh, he knows all about it, Hilda. Here, that's near enough. I only do it evenings and dinners. Hey, I'll do your hair for you, if you like. Mind, you'll have to take your curls out first. I'm quite capable of doing my own hair, thank you very much. You should have fooled me. No need to get personal. Here, I'll bet you're using hair dryer, aren't you? Of course I am. Ah, that's why we're getting all them wavy lines on our telly this dinner. It's your flipping hair dry. Our telly's only just the other side of that wall, you know. <laughs> you better get one of them depressors on it sharpish, else I'll have the council on you. If you got any complaints, Hilda, why don't you see Alf? I mean, let's face it, Alf is the council around here. Somehow I don't think you'll get very far. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Your tea's on. Lamb chops and roast potatoes. Fine. Something wrong? Yeah, everything. I want to see that slither again this afternoon. Burgess is going to plead guilty to the robbery. But it's still going to do me for wounding him. I'm up on court November the 11th. Oh, it's like a bad dream. It just keeps going on and on. Anyway, he claims that there may be a chance I might get off with it. But what's his opinion worth? He said I wouldn't have to go to court in the first place, didn't he? I'll tell you, Gail. I'm going to end up in prison. Okay, let's get in. Come on, then, girls. You deserve a drink. Oh, I can think so, not come on, kid. On me. Your feet are kidding me. I mean, buy your double, I'll drink. Do we get invited to parties? Never. Why hey, up, here. Look up. No, like stragglers from last year's Whitwalks. What's up, Vera? Have your legs caved in? Oh, shut up, Ignore the rabble, ladies. A large scotch for me and whatever these two charming ladies want, please. Gin and tonic. Mm. Yeah, I think I'll have a mother's ruin. I know how she wants to fell. Did you do any good, then? Ask the boss. Not bad for the first day after I give him a lesson in selling. Selling? Flogging, more like. Flogging? 
Punishing, you mean? Where's my drink? Uh, you are, girls. Oh, there you are, my love. Keep the change. I've got to sit down with feet. Oh, I. Come on, yeah, we'll go on, Billy. You sit down. Give your brains a rest, Lord. <laughs> Late again, G. Good job Mrs. Walker's not here. I've got something for you, Flower. Something good. There's a few fellas said that to me, Fred. It's never been out to write home about. What I've got for you is a little bit of red-hot news, Lynch. A real tidbit. You, Fred, you'd be the last to know if your shirt like were on fire. Alf Roberts only out there, isn't he? Repainted his shop front. Stop the presses. Hold the front page. All right, all right. Hang on, Saki Pants. Only, uh, he's only painting out the name Reeny Bradshaw, isn't he? Is he fire? Aye, and Audrey's standing there watching him, looking very pleased about Summit. Well, I knew he was a bit smitten. Do you reckon he's got something drastic in mind? I should ask Audrey. Oh, I'll tell you what, kid, there are nasty wind round that market. I don't know where it were coming from, but I know where it were going. Oh, well, I can you wear something thicker next time? Uh, hey, I'll tell you what else, though. You know that fellow on Potstow? It's a bit market tavern tonight. You feel like nipping down for one, kid? I don't. All I want to do is get up, get my shoes off and put my feet in silk. <laughs> well, they do say that hot vinegar's very good. <laughs> Not the <I> Ivy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm glad you two ladies are so happy about it, because I've booked another stall for tomorrow, and I'll tell you what, you two are running it. <laughs> and if this showing's a bit too early for you, you can always catch it at 12, 6.30 or 9 weekdays. But back to this morning and after the break, we're taking a trip to Emmerdale. Emmerdale. 